Welcome back to Pierce Stadium, Division II Super Bowl. St. Ray's, South Kingstown, getting ready to kick it off. The Rebels from South Kingstown will boot the ball away to the Saints from St. Ray's. And this, uh, as we mentioned before, St. Ray's has only lost one game all season. That was to South. And uh, a lot of times they've been dwelling on that. I'm sure this entire season they've been peaking for this one game. They have. And it was 27-0. And some of the stuff happened off turnovers. So they feel pretty confident coming into this one. Short kickoff picked up and busted right up the middle. A huge opening for St. Ray's. Just one man to beat. Running back the other way. He gets inside the 30, down to the 20, knocked out of bounds at the 17-yard line. A great break early in this one. Neil St. Jean, the senior. What a boost, and suddenly St. Ray's is cooking off the opening kickoff. I talked to Mike Sassy before the game, Don, and he said that he thought uh, that Neil would have a big, big game today. Obviously starting off on a, on a high note. And on a busted kickoff, too, St. Jean, uh, the star back, able great to block. great block in there by number 20, who just opened things up. Jason Leonard, a sophomore with a crushing block, opened things up. 62-yard return on that one. And the Saints are in great field position, starting at first and 10 at the South Kingstown 18-yard line. The Rebels have only given up two touchdowns in a game this season once. The most they've given up two touchdowns. They've got a dynamic defense, only giving up 99 points on the season. Handoff goes full back up the middle. That is number four, Giovanni Rodas, a junior. As you said, we're going to take a look at the lineups right now for you. First of all, for St. Ray's, St. Jean brothers, they are twin brothers, and they are both dynamic. Davis, Rodas also in the backfield, and Eric Hersberger will also see some action at tight end. Offensive line, it's a pretty good-sized offensive line for Division II for St. Ray's. Souza, the man at center, leading that offensive line. And, of course, the quarterback leading the show, Heath Labossier. Pitch goes to the outside, and that is to a newcomer, Herbert Butler, added to the St. Ray's team during the middle of the season. And I uh, understand he's a transfer. Yeah, he was playing at East Providence last year, and he transferred in, and I guess he started late, or actually middle of the season. Coach said he was going to play a little bit today. He has a look at the South Kingstown defensive line. White, Aud, White, and Langlois so up front for South Kingstown. Linebacking core, pretty good one right there. Flaherty's a guy who makes a lot of hits on defense for them, and they have some special players in the defensive backfield. Mike Wilson, Gavin Logan, either of those players can pick one off and take it back to the house, which they've done several times this season. We have a timeout on the field. St. Ray's calling the early timeout. So we'll be back to Pierce Stadium in just a moment. The holiday season has begun, and it's time to choose that special gift for that hard-to-buy-for person. Quaker Lane Tool has hundreds of gift ideas to choose from, and this year we're making it even easier. Just have your special someone fill out a Quaker Lane Tool gift registration card. With such a wide selection of brand names, let them pick their favorite tools so you don't have to. Merry Christmas from Quaker Lane Tool. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. I earned college credits for my military training in aircraft maintenance. With these credits and the education benefits of the Rhode Island Air National Guard, I'm on my way to earning my associate's degree in aircraft maintenance technology. Because I belong to the Rhode Island Air National Guard, I get to attend free state college courses on my base in North Kingstown. I'm pursuing a degree in education. You can receive your college education for little or no cost by being a member of the Rhode Island Air National Guard. Call today. Back to live action, third and 12 for the St. Ray's Saints at the 20-yard line. Big player early in this one. After a great kickoff, Saints trying to capitalize. Labossier dropping back, pressure backside. Little swing pass goes over to number three, Sean Davis. Busts this one all the way into the end zone. No flags. Touchdown. The St. Ray's Saints jump on top of the Rebels from South Kingstown. And pretty excited the Saints are. They were shut out by South Kingstown, 27 nothing, but they have the lead in the biggest game of the season. Just a half roll to the right and a screen back to the left side. Big offensive lineman out front do a great job of blocking. Davis takes it in, untouched into the end zone. That's a big touchdown right there for St. Ray's. And the Saints scoring just over a minute into this one. They'll go for the two-point conversion. Labossier dropping back, looking over the middle, fired. It goes incomplete. 6 nothing. the score at Pierce Stadium. We'll be back south with their first touch of the ball coming up next.
Call Mortgage America in Providence at 273-7000. You can barely tell this beautiful cast iron stove is not burning wood. It's the Townsend gas stove from Heat and Glow, and it's available at Stovepipe Fireplace Shop. And because it's gas, you can have a fire with just a touch of a button and enjoy Heat and Glow's clean burning, efficient, realistic flame. Save now on these beautiful stoves starting as low as $849. Don't miss your chance to save hundreds on Heat and Glow's Townsend stoves and other products your heart desires at Stovepipe Fireplace Shop. Bruce Tardif's team trailing for a rare time this season. The Rebels down 6 nothing to the Saints, who came out fired up. An opening kickoff got them in great field position, and they capitalized with a third and 12 swing pass that got them the lead. And now the Saints kick off to South Kingstown, a very talented Rebel offensive unit. Gavin Logan, number three, the freshman. Number two, Mike Wilson, 36 touchdowns on the season for Wilson. Anytime he touches the ball, Terry, he, he can take it home, and that's why you expect sometimes you're not even going to kick the ball deep to these right. guys. And people started to kick away from him, and then, you know what, Gavin's back there, and he can do a great job with the ball, too, in his hand. So, kind of got a double-edged sword back there. I, I don't expect him to really kick it deep. I'm expecting some kind of squib kick, let it roll around a little bit, kind of throw off their timing. Rodas kicks it down, and it's going to be taken by Wilson on the 21-yard line, fumbles it, and he is immediately dropped by Butler. So they kick it deep to Wilson. And nice coverage that time as the Saints were all over him. And Herbert Butler made the tackle on the play. They've got a lot of confidence St. Ray's does right now, Don. And kicking it deep like this, they feel pretty confident that they can stop these guys. Took his eye off it. Just got to get back on top of it, start over, and let's go. Let's see what happens here. South Kingstown starting first and 10 on their own 18-yard line. A lot of territory to go. There is Mike Wilson, the man we will feature much today. Wilson dropped after about a four-yard gain. McLaughlin with the tackle. And he's the heart and soul of that defense, number 24. Take a look, at, take a look at your offensive lineup for the South Kingstown Rebels. Wilson, Logan, and Odds, a big moose there at fullback. He scored a few touchdowns this season, and uh, they won't throw the ball too much to the outside. White and uh, Andrew Langlois, the leader at center offensively for that team. A couple of whites up there on the offensive line. Handoff goes up the middle. That's Justin Odd, and Odd picks up a few yards on the play. He'll be dropped about three yards short of a first down. Check out your defensive lineup for the St. Ray Saints. Hershberger, Babbitt, and Souza up front on the defensive line. Linebacking core, very aggressive right here. McLaughlin, the leader on that core, and uh, he already made a big tackle in this game, and a lot of speed back there, led by the St. Jean boys and also Sean Davis. They can make some plays in the secondary for Mike Sassy's team. It won't be a, a factor today, but uh, Neil has 21 intercept, uh, excuse me, seven interceptions on the year. Handoff goes up the middle and appears to be enough for a first down for Mike Wilson. Going to be very close here, see, and then the official's going to whip, signal the chains in. So we'll have our first measurement of the game. There's nothing fancy about what South Kingstown's going to do, Don. They're going to line up in a double tight and a double wing, and they're going to run counter, counter crisscross, full back dive, and they're just going to pound you. And in their backfield, uh, Wilson has scored 36 touchdowns this season. Aud scored 14 touchdowns, and Logan has scored nine touchdowns. So Wilson's not a one-man show as no. the Rebels pick up the first down. It's your head official, Ray Brown. And Bruce Tardiff, head coach at South Kingstown. And this is a payback game for the Rebels, too, because they were knocked out of the playoffs last, last year, year by St. Ray's, but they won the one meeting this year between the two teams, 27 to nothing. And you could see Wilson was the man in that meeting. Here is Mike Wilson, and he could be gone anytime he touches the ball. Nice job by St. Ray's to drop him in the defensive backfield as the tackle was made by Sean Davis. You could see the explosiveness there. Yeah, he, he explodes up inside. And, and Don, something that, that St. Ray's is doing a little bit different today. They're... Um, well, let's see the replay here first. Just a little counter up inside. Nice big hole. Nice tackle by Davis because if he was, if he didn't make that tackle, he was gone. But St. Ray's has changed up their, their front. They're playing more of a 5-3, almost a 5-4. They're packing nine guys in the box. Going to try to stop the run. Mike Wilson will take it out over the 40-yard line. Another first down for the Rebels. 
You can't stop Wilson. You can't beat South Kings down, and nobody's been able to stop him this year, and that's no. why the Rebels are undefeated. Two touchdowns in every game he has played in this season. He missed one game for South Kingston. Still, though, he's rushed for nearly 2,200 yards on the season. And Bruce is trying to settle him down a little bit here. Nice job of getting two consecutive first downs, kind of get the jitters out. Now it's time to play some football. South Kingstown won the Super Bowl two years ago. Wilson, the quarterback on the team at the time. Again, handoff goes to Mike Wilson. Finds a little bit of room on the outside. Gets it up over midfield. Eventually dragged down 49-yard line into Ray's territory. Very close to another first down. Just a sweep to the right, pulling both guards, coming around the corner. Lyman doing a nice job of getting out in front. Picks up a 10 yards. First down, they're going to measure, going to measure. Not an excessively huge offensive line for the Rebels, but uh, they use a little bit more speed, like you say, and yeah. that helps them to get some blockers downfield and get kids. out. The kid, uh, 68, Josh White, and Langlois, both good-sized kids, uh, but they run pretty well, and that's what they they do in the wing T offense is they're moving around and pulling and trapping, and they've got to be able to get around the corner. Josh White, the emotional leader for South Kingstown. He's the kid you'll see get fired up quite a bit out there. Just a junior. It's going to be first down and 10 for the Rebels. Just inside Ray's territory. They go to Logan on the reverse. Gavin Logan with some room in front of him. Downfield block eventually will be dragged out of bounds at the 38-yard line. And uh, right into one of our cameramen down there on the sideline. And He's up and running. No worse for wear. That's the counter crisscross that you see in the wing tee. They hand it off to Wilson, and he gives it on an inside handoff coming back on to Logan. Had a good success with that play last week, basically all year. Look later on for them to run an option play off of that time. Gavin Logan, a freshman, perhaps the most talented freshman in uh, the state, and then a, a relative of Jerry Rice, we understand. Yes, long-distance relative, yes. Handoff goes to Aud up the middle, immediately hit. St. Ray's interior defensive line doing a nice job of bottling up the fullback on that play. Tackle made in the middle by a, a host of St. Ray's defenders, including number 30, Eric Persberger. So it's going to be second down and 10, no gain on the play. This is a typical South Kingstown drive, just pounding the fullback, running a little counter, running a little crisscross, just trying to wear you down. Awed the lone back in the backfield. That's Logan in motion. Handoff goes Wilson. He's free into the secondary. Gets it to the 30. Very close to another first down. The St. Ray's is packing, as we said, Don. They're packing nine guys into the box there. And, and it's obvious. South Kingston's not going to, to, to try to fool you. They've only thrown the ball 27 times this year. And they're going to run Mike Wilson left and right and Gavin Logan left and right and sneak the fullback in there. You can do a nice job up front of getting him some holes. And you can see the quick feet that he has back there. Can Great cut feet. on a dime. Great feet. Long drive for South Kingstown. Typical eating up a lot of time right now. Very close to another first down. And just going to be short. So it's going to be third and uh, looks to be about six, seven inches to go for Bruce Tardis Rebels. Beautiful football weather day here. A little bit of a wind that is at the Rebels' back right now, judging to be about uh, 10 to 15 miles an hour, and the Rebels have the wind at their back right now. Wilson already 42 yards on this drive. Third, real short. Look for the fullback potentially up the middle. That's what they run. First down for the Rebels. He's a big load. They just run fullback dive here. 220 pounder gets that momentum going forward. Really, he's untouched until he gets about four yards up the field. 14 touchdowns on the season for the junior odd, and he, he missed, missed four. Time. Yeah, missed four games this season. Had a season. back problem. South Kingstown marching. Here comes Wilson, and we got a flag down on the play as Wilson is brought for a loss in the backfield. And the penalty will go against South Kingstown. Even though they drop Wilson for the loss, we'll see if they decide to accept the penalty here. 
That's an illegal shift on the offense. So the illegal it's shift is declined because second they dropped him for a three yard loss. So instead of being a first and 15, set up a second and 12. They had a little problem with this the other night too against Cranston West with some, when they're bringing the guy in short motion, somebody up on the offensive line is moving. Had that call about three or four times the other night also. That's Logan in motion, handoff to Logan, back to Wilson. Wilson breaks down to the 20 yard line. Gonna set up a third down and six yard situation for the Rebels. Again, probably two down territory for South Kingstown no here. No question. Just running what we call a counter crisscross here. Gavin starts on a sweep, hands it inside to Mike Wilson. Five yard gain, six yard gain. But you're right, they're in two down territory. I, I wouldn't. I don't think they'll kick it from here to, to try a field goal. I think they'll try third and fourth down if they don't pick it up here. Look at that, nearly 600 yards rushing against uh, Cranston West in their semifinal victory. A lot of offensive firepower. Pitch to Wilson on the outside, and he is brought down. Nice tackle as made by number 57, Matt Sarabo, the junior linebacker, dropping Wilson. And he will be short of the first down. It's going to be fourth and four for the Rebels. Just running the sweep. And they made him go wide. Saravo coming from the inside out. Nice shoestring tackle. Nice job by number 44, Sean McGowan, to uh, kind of slow up the development of that play, get in the backfield and really slow up Wilson's momentum. So first big offensive play for the Rebels, fourth and four. They trail early in this one. Oh, the lone back in the backfield. That's Logan in motion. Handoff goes Wilson, and the Saints bottle him up. Wilson staying on his feet, but will come up short of the first down. And St. Rays comes up big on defense. They take over on down. That's a big momentum swing right there down for St. Rays. You can see, you watch all the white shirts go. Wherever two goes, there go the white shirts, and they were surrounding them. He almost broke out of it here. You gotta wrap him up. That's the biggest thing today. You put a helmet on him, you've got to squeeze him. 4.44 left to go first quarter. South Kingstown trailing. The Saints from St. Ray's, six to nothing. Let's see if St. Ray's now can capitalize on the, that momentum of stopping them and, and get a drive going on offense. First time they had the ball, very short field for Mike Sassy's Rays as they had a uh, opening kickoff, got the ball down to the South Kingstown 18 yard line. So this will be the first time they've had to eat up any sort of uh, yardage. That's Butler in motion. Handoff comes up the middle to St. Jean. And again, there are two different St. Jean brothers that we'll be talking about quite a bit during this game. Number 21 is Neil St. Jean. And he's the more, he, he's he gets more touches than his, uh, his brother Nick does. They're just running the counter crisscross off the wing tee right there, up inside. They'll do a lot of things with formations in motion to try to confuse South Kingstown today. Neil St. Jean, 17 touchdowns on the season, rushed for 550 yards, and uh, also caught 200 yards worth of passes during the year. St. Jean, deep in the eye, takes the pitch, and he is immediately swallowed up on the outside as number 56 for South Kingstown comes up with a big tackle. Dustin Pino with the tackle, the junior linebacker. All he did was sidestep the fullback and just smacked him right in the mouth. Talked about that a little bit yesterday. You really need to, to contest right there. You need to make sure you get your body on him. You don't have to drop the guy, but you, right. have, you have to get some sort of uh, tie-up. Especially at that first him. level. Right. Play broke down and uh, going to set up third down and 10. Saints a dangerous passing team. Labossier has thrown 12 touchdowns this year. Bossier hands off to Butler, though. They run on the outside. Butler swings out free. Bottled up by the Rebels, though, and he is dropped after a four-yard gain, setting up a fourth down and six. And it'll be punting time for St. Ray's. And Rodas is the punter. He's got a 37-yard average on the season, so that's a pretty good weapon to have. See if they can kick it out of, out of this area, get them into good defensive field position. Rodas kicking into about a 15-mile-an-hour wind right now. Back deep for South Kingstown, Wilson and Logan. Wilson and Logan deep. 
Otis takes the snap, boots it away. Good kick into the wind. That's going to be Gavin Logan who lets the ball bounce, and it rolls all the way down to the 32-yard line. We'll be back. Rebels ball when we return to Pierce Stadium. It's road-hugging, fuel-injected, wind-blowing through your hair excitement. It's in the turn of the wheel. It's acceleration, performance. It's the edge. The advantage of owning an all-new Volkswagen. At the new Speedcraft Volkswagen, we have the edge. Selling outstanding new and used vehicles with personal care and attention to your needs, making your car buying experience pure pleasure. Drivers wanted customer satisfaction guaranteed at the new Speedcraft Volkswagen Wakefield. Under new ownership, let us show you what the new and the new Speedcraft is all about. First Bank and Trust Company believes in developing a strong relationship between the bank and our customers. Our experienced lenders provide prompt decisions on commercial mortgages, credit lines, and SBA financing. I think our experience at First Bank and Trust was a very positive experience. Um, we would go back to them in a heartbeat to start another project or for a house loan or for anything like that. We we'll open our next restaurant. <laughs> Back to Pierce Stadium, Rebels taking over first and 10, own 32-yard line. Hand off to Mike Wilson. And Wilson dropped for no gain on the play. Number 30 is Hurstberger making the tackle. Eric Hurstberger, Jr. They're doing a good job of wrapping him up so far. Making the hit, wrap him up. See if South Kingstown changes their offensive approach here a little bit. They've dominated time of possession. But the special teams play the long kickoff return by St. Ray's has been the difference in this one. Maybe mix things up, pound odd, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, maybe put him in there. You know, when we talk about mixing up the South Kings on it's just who's going to run differently because they're not going to throw the ball. And they have changed the formation. Logan with the long back in the backfield. As I say it. Avarista under heavy pressure, dumps the ball off. St. Ray's looking for a grounding call, but there was a Rebel receiver in the territory, so it'll go incomplete. Second and ten. Very uncharacteristic of, of South Kingston. Just trying to run a, a flood route off the play action. You got a guy in the flat, a, an intermediate guy down the field. He just doesn't get out and around. That's a tough throw going left when you're a right-handed quarterback. Trying to throw it across your body. Avarista unsuccessful. Sean McGowan, you're taking a look at number 44. And it was a different lineup that time. They took Hawd, the fullback, out of the backfield, put him on the wing, and lined up Logan as the single back. They're getting into territory they don't want to be into, Don, having to throw the football. Third. Now on third and ten, hey. Yep. Avarista's going to have to throw. He's under heavy pressure. Looking downfield, has Mike Wilson, and the ball just barely overthrown. And it's not easy to overthrow Mike Wilson because he can run up to under on many a pass. And it, it looked like they were trying to run that the same type of thing that uh, St. Ray's did, half, half roll, set up the screen to the to the right, South Kingstown, I mean, excuse me, St. Ray's kind of snuffed it out here. Mike Wilson did a good job there. He adjusted, ran down the field, almost. Yep, just barely overthrown. The wind was at Avarista's back on that one as Mike Wilson, you can see, getting a quick blow on the sidelines. He's uh, so involved in the play that they'll try to take him out here in the punt coverage situations. Avarista will kick the ball away. He does have the wind at his back, see if he can take advantage of it. It's a low line kick. And they'll just let the ball roll away. St. Ray's taking over on offense when we return to Pierce Stadium. At South County Mortgage, we're training the loan officers of the future. With over 200 programs, we've got to start them early. You need a mortgage, you need cash. Call South County Mortgage. For money for any reason. We specialize in residential mortgage financing, low fixed rate mortgages, one-on-one -on -one service, and quick closings. No matter what your credit history, South County has a program to fit your needs. So call the pros. South County Mortgage, better than bank rates, better than bank service. Come see New England's Bed and Bath Headquarters at Apex. Apex is the only place that has brand name mattresses like Sealy, Serta, Simmons, Englander, and Stearns and & Foster, all under one roof. Not one or two brands like the other stores. Now you can shop Apex without leaving your home. Visit apexstores.com for safe online shopping. The only site on the web with everything for your home under one roof. There's something for everyone at Apex. 
Back to Pierce Stadium. Saints on top of the Rebels, six nothing. A minute and a half to go left here in the first quarter of play. And a Butler up the middle, immediately snuffed up by the interior of the Rebel defensive line. Andrew Langlois, nice job of shedding the block and making a big tackle right inside. Langlois is a senior, uh, being looked at by some 1AA schools. You know, he's Mainly Ivy League guy. Yep. He's got some academic prowess. He's up around 12 or 1300 on his SATs. Of course, they're all smart down in South hey, Town, you know? That's right. Second down, 10 yards to go. St. Jean deep in the eye. Rodas is your fullback. Handoff goes to St. Jean. A little room on the outside. Eventually dropped down there. Gavin Logan coming up with a little bit of help. Take another look at this one. Going outside sweep just to... Gavin Logan, nice job of... Sticking his head up in there. Along with you can pronounce that one. There you go, Marcus Akinkoa. Marcus Akinkoa, number 70. And time will tick away here in the first quarter of play as the Saints not lining up. Under 10 seconds to go here in the first quarter, they'll take the wind at their back for a third and sixth opportunity as the first quarter comes to an end in the Division II Super Bowl at Pierce Stadium. The Rebels not used to trailing, but they are down 6-0 to the Saints. We'll be back for the second quarter. If you already own bunk beds, or you're thinking about getting bunk beds for your kids, there's a few things you need to know. Because kids just don't sleep on bunk beds. They climb, they jump, and they roll on them. Use guardrails on both sides of the upper bunks. And every so often, just check the connections to make sure they're still tight. And never put a child under six years old on the upper bunk. I'm Rowan from Off Track Bedding. I'd feel real comfortable with Taylor on our bunk beds. It's time to wake up to a great... Off Track Bedding, the lowest prices every night. First Bank and Trust Company believes in developing a strong relationship between the bank and our customers. Our experienced lenders provide prompt decisions on commercial mortgages, credit lines, and SBA financing. Like First Bank and Trust, that has confidence in their developer. They gave us the opportunity to perform beyond even our own expectations. Our relationship with First Bank and Trust was that of working with a partner. Pierce Stadium. You can tell it's a nice weather day here. Uh, the St. Ray's fans are, well, they're uh, pretty naked over there for being in the middle of December, huh? Yeah. Well, those are Rebel those fans. Are, those are Rebel fans. Oh, well, figure They're it. used to the beach. Exactly. And first quarter of action, South Kingstown not completing a pass there in the first quarter. The 20-yard pass was the touchdown play as Davis caught that one. Rushing yardage, slight advantage to South Kingstown. They have time of possession on their side, but the Rays team owns the, the big number, the 6-0 advantage on the scoreboard. And playing with confidence, as we said, out of the break. Butler to St. Jean. He's going to look to throw it right back to Butler, who is wide open. Butler catching the ball at the 40, over the 50, getting into Rebel territory, down all the way to the 35-yard line. Razzle-dazzle St. Jean to Butler, and the Saints are cooking again. They gave it to St. Jean like they were going to run the sweep, and Butler snuck out of the backfield. Continued down the sideline, St. Jean. And a nice pass there, just barely yeah, got it over just the South Kingston defender. South Kingston defender is right. Looked like it might have been tipped. No, it was tipped. Very nice play on Flaherty both ends. It. Good concentration by Butler getting it down the field, and I'll tell you what, that's a big play right there. Now you got it inside South Kingstown territory. You're on the move. Inside the 37, first and 10 for the Saints. Big third down conversion. St. Jean out of the backfield, in motion. Rodas, the lone back. The block. Labossier going downfield. Davis, the connection. Getting it down to the 17-yard line. Another first down. Labossier, pretty good thrower of the ball. That's a nice throw right there. That's about a 20-yard completion. Just a little bit of a half roll, running a flood route, take the inside guy. Nice catch by Davis, he knew he was gonna get hit. Nice job of running that uh, play too, having Jason Boss a little further downfield. Made the South Kingstown defender have to uh, play it halfway and they found the, the seam in there, tackle made by Logan. First and 10 Saints. 
17-yard line. Butler in motion. Tomasi under heavy pressure and can't get that one away. Flaherty with the sack. Ford had the original right. pressure. And that was that was key in that, that Ord was able to put that pressure on. It made him just hesitate, and then here comes Flaherty to clean it up. The junior with the sack there. Second down, 16 yards to go now. Big play for the South Kingstown defense. First time they've really come up real big defensively in this game. Probably puts uh, St. Ray's into a throwing situation again here, Ben. here with the pitch to Butler. Rodas leading the block. And Butler eventually keeps fighting hard, gets it down to about the 22-yard line. Wilson making the tackle on the play. But Butler runs hard. Again, we said he's a transfer from East Providence. Just running an outside sweep here. And Mike Wilson, nice job of tackling. Hit and wrap. Hold them up so you get a little bit of help from your mates. And uh, going to be third down and 13. We have a timeout on the field. We'll be back. St. Ray's big third down situation when we return to Pierce Stadium. The holiday season has begun, and it's time to choose that special gift for that hard-to-buy-for person. Quaker Lane Tool has hundreds of gift ideas to choose from, and this year we're making it even easier. Just have your special someone fill out a Quaker Lane Tool gift registration card. With such a wide selection of brand names, let them pick their favorite tools so you don't have to. Merry Christmas from Quaker Lane Tool. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. At South County Mortgage, we're training the loan officers of the future. With over 200 programs, we've got to start them early. You need a mortgage, you need cash. Call South County Mortgage. For money for any reason. We specialize in residential mortgage financing, low fixed rate mortgages, one-on-one -on -one service, and quick closings. No matter what your credit history, South County has a program to fit your needs. So call the pros. South County Mortgage, better than bank rates, better than bank service. Third and 15 for St. Ray's. Deep in South Kingstown territory again. Probably two down territory right now for Saints. I would think so. Labassier dropping back, looking for St. Gino in the middle, throws it into traffic, ball deflected, and it is caught. Boy, the bounces are certainly going the way of the Saints. Nick St. Jean coming up with the grab. Labassier threw that one into a little bit of blue traffic, right? And Nick St. Jean, I don't know if he was the one that tipped it. Good concentration. Well, he did tip it and Tremendous. it came back with great concentration. Just to extend that arm out to get it in the first place to be great able to play. knock it up in the air. Great play. Because if he didn't get a hand on that, it probably would have been picked off by the Rebels right behind him. St. Ray's taking another timeout here, Don. And 21 turnovers to the plus side for St. Ray's this year. That's a great year. ratio. Plus 21, yeah, that's an average of plus two a game. You're getting two turnovers more a game than your opponent. All right, timeout, Rays. We'll be back, fourth down and short. Call Mortgage America in Providence at 737000. <laughs> Ooh, it's the Colonel dude, Barry Gibbs. Right now, the Colonel's going to give you a holiday deal and a free sandwich. The Duke of Drumsticks, Sultan of Sandwiches. Get 10 pieces of KFC original recipe for just $8.99. Plus a coupon to try the new original recipe sandwich free. Colonel's cool, Colonel's cool. Actually, I'm cold. At KFC, we do chicken right. So far, seven play, 66-yard drive for St. Ray's, but here's a big one on it. Fourth and uh, 
Make it a short three right now for Rays. Just about the 10 yard line. Fourth down, in motion. Rodas, the lone back in the backfield, the fullback. Pass out into the flat is caught in a touchdown. Davis, Sean Davis, his second touchdown of this game. St. Ray's with a 12-0 lead on the Rebels coming up big on fourth and three. Half roll. The flood route over there in the flat. And he hits Davis, who makes a great catch. And he's in. Almost got that knee down. It was a little tight right there. So St. Ray's all over the Rebels. The first time they've trailed by this deficit all season. 12, nothing to score. Two-point conversion attempt upcoming. Lavoisier dropping back. Heavy pressure, a little dump. And St. Jean will come up short of the end zone. 12, nothing to score. St. Ray's comes up short on the conversion, but they've got to be thrilled where they stand right now in this football game. I'll tell you what, Lavoisier is doing a nice job of... Uh, Finding his receivers, putting the ball in the area. Nice catch here by Davis, and basically just has to fall in the end zone. Davis so far, two touchdown receptions on the day. And the Saints come marching into the end zone, 12-0. Big character check now here for South Kingstown. And I tell you, we said that momentum from the very first kickoff when they returned that ball 60-something yards. It's been with St. Ray's to that point. And it's not like... South Kingstown sleepwalking, but they look like they're playing a little bit tentative. If you look at the Saints' numbers through the year, you know, South Kingston obviously got all the publicity going undefeated, but this is a team that defeated Hendricken, a Division I power, a team that lost in double overtime in the Division I Super Bowl, and the Saints were able to knock them off earlier this season. As you can see, they put together the very impressive scoring drive right there, and, uh, you know, they've been able to roll through everybody except for their one meeting with South Kingstown this season, and this is the game they've been pointing to ever since then. They have, and, and they, as we said at the beginning, they were confident coming in here that they could play with South Kingstown, and through one quarter and a, and a, a third of another, they've done that so far. And now they'll get to kick the ball away with the wind at their back. Wilson, Logan back deep for South Kingstown. They're jumping up and down on the sidelines over here. They're fired up. As you said, gut check time. 9.27 left to go in the second quarter. Already 12 to nothing for the Saints. Rodas deep boot, way back. Taking advantage of that win through the end zone. Rebels to take over first and 10 on their own 20. Adrenaline's flowing. Big time with St. Ray's. They are playing to the emotion of the crowd playing to the emotion of each other. Butler just ran down the field and knocked somebody for a loop. Settle down here for South Kingstown. Get, do what you were doing in the first couple of drives. You just got to finish. They just got to be able to finish a drive here. They need a touchdown on this drive to stay in this football. Before this game, that was the numbers. 477 to 99. They had outscored their opponents this year, and uh, many of those scores came late in games when they were ahead, and they put the second stringers in. South Kingstown has been a dominant team. Handoff goes up the middle to Aud. Expect to run him a little bit more right now as they get it up to the 30-yard line. Looks to be just short of a first down, but that might be an offensive set that they really haven't tried to pound odds so far and uh, maybe they're gonna give that a shot for a while and to Bruce's credit here he's not going crazy as far as getting out of his offensive scheme he's only down 12 to nothing he can stay with what got him here and like you say probably run all a little bit more soften up the inside because they're looking for Wilson and Logan going wide second and one uh, flexible offensive situation right now for the Rebels on the second and one is Gavin and Logan checks out of the game for a little breather that's Wilson in motion. Handoff to Aud. Pullback up to the 36. First and 10 Rebels. Keep pounding the big fellas. They're just running fullback dive, Don. And letting the big horse run up inside. At 220 pounds. You know, that's a big load for them to tackle on the other side. And you keep softening them up with him and 
then you let the scat backs go. Ran for 650 yards this year despite missing four games. You can see a nice average for the fullback. Again to Odd. Again, Odd breaks free, this time over midfield. Takes several Saints to drop him down, and we have a fumble on the play, picked up by St. Ray. That's McGowan with the ball. McGowan gets the ball back. A huge turnover by the Rebels just when they were moving the football, and the Saints are in position once again in Rebel territory. I thought, I thought that ball might have hit the ground down, that the ground caused the fumble. Take another we'll look here at on it. the replay. And you watch no, it's out before yeah. it went down. Good call by the ref. McGowan on the spot. Good call there by the officials here at the Interscholastic League. A little tighter look where they up. Knocked out. It appeared number, was that number 30 who got the yeah. hand on it? It was. Hershberger. Hershberger on it. Just a little tempted out of there. Hold that thing close to your body. Timeout South Kingstown right now as the Rebels grab a timeout. A to regroup and second of all to give Ord a little bit of a break right now because He's one of their stalwarts on the defensive line, and uh, they need to make sure that he's uh, a little rested out there. Bruce has got to go out and calm this team down right now. They've got to just say, hey, look, so far things have not gone our way. Let's just play football. Let's not give up another score here. First turnover of the game, and uh, make that a 22 to the positive side ratio this year for the St. Ray's Saints. Rebels, uh, as we said, the latest poll that came out from Nesson ranked fourth in New England the entire year that they've been ranked up in the top ten. And it's, uh, this is testing them now because, they, as you pointed out before, they have not been behind this year. And, hey, they've got to come up with something big here. They've, the defense now has to stand their ground. They cannot give up a drive or any kind of points if they do. <laughs> Could be desperation time, yeah. Eight we may see South Kingston throw it. Yeah, eight minutes to go in this second quarter of play, and the Rebels already down 12 nothing. See if they can come up with a big defensive stand. And time back in. Good mixture of the pass and run so far from the St. Ray's offense. Labossier has been on the money so far. St. Ray's has 200 yards in offense already done to this point. First meeting against South Kingstown. They ran for 122 yards and passed for 100 against the Rebels. A little bit of a broken play, and the Rebel defense gets the ball right back for the offense. On the broken play, Labossier fumbles the ball. Clarity was down on the bottom of the pile. It looks like one of the running backs might have gone the wrong way. Take a look right now. It looked like it was going to be an isolation play up inside where the fullback was the lead and, and St. Jean was supposed to follow him and it looked like he was expecting sweep. Quarterback did the right thing by not going to chase, but now he's just got a hole of football. And Odd, well, he fumbled to give Rays the ball and he got it right back right there, forcing the fumble. Redeeming himself. We saw that yesterday with uh, Blackman from uh, Hendrickson fumble one time and then came up with an interception late. Wilson bottled up immediately, no gain on the play. Are the Rebels getting too tricky on offense? I mean, uh... no, that's really right there as a staple that they've run most of the year. And it's, it's you know, what the, the thing is, is that St. Ray's has nine guys within that two yards of the line of scrimmage. So it's there's a lot of white shirts and it's going to take them a little bit of time to figure out their blocking schemes. This is a whole new defense that they haven't seen yet. And be aware that Wilson was the quarterback for South Kingstown his first three years here. So he has the ability to throw the ball out of the backfield. There's odd the fullback. They have found no answer for him so far. Bust deep into St. Ray's territory, picking up a first down. And he's the type of runner, Don, Don that's not going to run away from anybody. He's going to make you hurt. He's going to punish you when he when you tackle him. So far, they haven't, they haven't really had to lay many gloves on him. Tackle him at the ankles. Mike Wilson made a nice key block on that one to spring him loose. Number seven in the game. Matt Kitchell for South Kingstown, a senior co-captain. Giving Gavin Logan a break. Ord, lone back in the backfield. Wilson in motion, handoff first back. Ord, again, another big gain, about eight on the play. And 
Nice blocking Just on the running interior inside line. Belly. And he's the type of guy, too, you're not going to bring him down on first contact. No. He's going to get a couple yards uh, just falling forward. Justin Orr, the junior. 7.2 yards of carry. That's, that tells you keep giving it to him. Wilson, this time in the backfield, he takes the handoff up the middle. Looks to be close to another South Kingstown first down. We're going to get, uh, yes, first down signal to the Rebels. Have a first down on the 23 yard line of St. Ray's. Their deepest offensive penetration. Have a risk to the quarterback. Running the show, handing off to Mike Wilson. Wilson, six yard game. Tackle made by number 18, Brian Stacy on the play. Just running the inside counter. And he's just an ankle away from breaking that one. Second down, long four to go for the Rebels. They trail 12-0, 5.40 left to go in the first half of play. Division II Super Bowl here on Cox 3. Odd the fullback. Again, very close to a first down. He's going to wear on you as the game goes along, too. Yeah, 220 plus pounds. And, and St. Ray's isn't the biggest team in the world. They, they rely more on speed, so you just got to keep pounding him in here, and it's going to soften them up. As soon as Avarista makes the handoff, too, uh, this territory heads right over Bruce Tardiff to get the next play to be able to run it right in. And we're going to have a measurement out on the field, very close to another first down for the Rebels. There's Mike Wilson, has scored two touchdowns in every single game he has played this year, at least two touchdowns, and uh, so far, St. Ray's has kept him bottled up. Ray Brown signals for the first down for the Rebels. Ball on the 13. Andrew Langlois, the center, the senior captain. There's Wilson. Trying to get free on the outside, inside the 10, down to about the 5, driven out of bounds. Wilson's a tough kid, only 5'7", but uh, real strong, and uh, they say he has no problem dunking a basketball at 5'7". He reminds me a little bit of Cy Butler, who used to play for the University of Rhode Island. He just gets the ball up the field. McGowan and St. Jean among those in on the tackle. Going to be second and about a yard to go. Ball on the three-yard line. South Kingstown trying to get into the end zone for the first time this day. Odd's your fullback. And Odd is into the end zone. The Rebels from South Kingstown get on the scoreboard. Justin Odd with his 15th touchdown on the season. Helped to set that one up, recovered the, or forced the fumble where the Rebels recovered, and he takes it into fade dirt. In the same play that they've been running, the, the, basically the whole drive, that inside belly with the fullback, he just pounded it up in there. Rebels trailing 12 to 6, they will go for a two point conversion here. Wilson, the motion back, has room to the outside. And he finds the end zone. Rebels convert with the two points. 12 to 8 is our score. Mike Wilson gets on the board, and the Rebels trail by four. And they get a little momentum going their way with 4.17 left to go in the first half. That's a big score for them, too, right there. Making it 12 to 8 with the two point conversion. Now they can be back into this football game emotionally and take a little pressure off themselves. Take another look at the touchdown right here by Ord. Again, just sheer power up in there. The Rays had four tackles on him, but he's just such a big, big kid, so strong and able to bow right through him. And that's been the difference on the offense when they turn to Ord a little bit more here. Yeah, and try to settle themselves down. And hey, you know what? The nice thing with that whole thing was because he fumbled the ball prior. Right. And showed a little bit of confidence in him coming back and giving him the football to say, okay, 
you know, we, we understand you made a, a mistake the first time, but carry us into the end zone. Bruce Tardis team 12 and 0 on the season. They have pitched four shutouts this year. They won't get one here. And the team uh, has given up two touchdowns on the season, but that's it. So if Ray scores again, that would be the most touchdowns they've given up in a game so far this season. South defense hoping that they've reached their limit. Gavin Logan getting ready to put the ball away. The squib kick over the middle. Rodas, the fullback, picks it up there. Puts the head down. Barrels his way up to about the 43. So first and ten for St. Ray's on the 42-yard line. Now he's just got to get his team back into the flow on defense here. They recovered a fumble the, the, the last time. Got to look to get another turnover or at least three downs and out. Get the momentum back on the South Kingstown side. Try to get one in before the half. Labossiere, the quarterback, handoff up the middle to Davis. He scored both touchdowns for St. Ray's. Gets it up near midfield. Take another look at Davis going up the middle. That's three different backs they've lined up deep in the eye. Tailback spot, yeah. Kitchell with the tackle. Using him as a receiver more today. Come on, as a true running back. Head coach Mike Sassy's team with a 12-8 lead. I'd like to thank the Providence Journal. Been a uh, proud sponsor of the high school Super Bowls here in the state of Rhode Island for a number of years now. And uh, once again, making this an enjoyable experience for many. Rodas, the fullback, goes nowhere immediately. Immediately dropped in the middle by the... Uh, Josh White did a great yeah. job on that one, Don. Fighting off the blocker and just basically stuffing that hole. Third and three now for St. Ray's. Got the old school J-pads on there, too, on the forearms. You haven't seen those since you were playing at South Kingstown High School. <laughs> and I played soccer, so. <laughs> yes, I'm a rebel without a cause. 1979. Deep in the eye, Davis. Now he's in motion. Third and three, the Bossier dropping back. Heavy pressure setting up the screen. There's St. Jean, he's got the first and more, up to the 40. Down to the 35 yard line. You can almost see that so early when they allow such a heavy rush in. Yep. And that's twice that they've gone misdirection with the pass. They've looked one way, going back the other way and picked up a big game. And they're having some success too. You know, South Kingston has to respect that half roll by Labasia because they've been throwing that flood route. Now he stops, throws it back on the screen. Big, big pickup. They've been very successful on third down. Another pickup there. Ball on the 36-yard line, first and 10 for St. Ray's. 225 left to go first half. Division II Super Bowl. Pitch to Davis. Davis breaks free, breaks a tackle. Bounce off. Akinkoa. Hey, I'm very impressed with this uh, St. Ray's offense here, Don. They're doing a lot of different things with motion, with formations, sneaking people out here, sneaking people out there. They're, they're confusing South Kingstown. Davis checking out uh, the rest as uh, Butler checks in the game. Butler will line up deep in the eye. St. Jean on the wing. Reverse to St. Jean. He's going to throw the ball again downfield. Rebels, good coverage over the middle as the attempted pass for number 88. Evan Meekins was well defended by South. That was the same play they threw before when they hit Butler out of the backfield. And he did the same thing, but Meekins ran a post. Same exact play, South. All over this one. Good coverage down there by number 24. For the South Kingstown Rebels, uh, Tom Robinson, a junior free safety. And that's his job, making sure that uh, don't they don't let get anybody get deep. behind you. Third down, six yards to go now for St. Ray's. Again, probably two down territory with a minute 33 to go. Again, St. Jean takes the pitch. This time he's going to run it. Cuts back across field. Got enough yardage to get very close to the first down. And it looks like he does have the first. Nice job, Neil St. Jean, changing direction. 
First down, St. Ray's. He's just going to run an outside sweep to the right side here. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, the reverse. Nothing there, South Kingstown clogs it up, and he brings it all the way back to the other side. St. Ray's has used all their timeouts in this half. They have a first and 10 at the South Kingstown 25, but they cannot stop the clock with a timeout. Just over a minute to go in this one. Labossier throws it out to Butler. Butler, still on his feet, losing yardage. Butler, though, comes down, and Wilson waiting for him for the tackle and drops him down at the 25-yard line. That turned out to run about uh, 30 yards for a one-yard gain. Yeah, for a one-yard gain. And it that used, was an interesting play. And it used a lot of time on the clock with no timeouts. Butler would have been better off going right down on that one. Taking, getting the ball, getting his five yards, and getting out of bounds, and getting up to the the line and go from there. Second and 10, back to live action. Labossier throws it over the middle. Boss with the connection, gets it down to the 15, breaks free. Down to the 11-yard line. They'll stop the clock here as they move the chains. 28 seconds to go. No timeouts for St. Ray's. Looks like they're in a, a, a kill formation. They're just going to probably kill the ball. Clock is back and running. Labossier does it with 24 seconds left to go. They'll have a second and 10 at the South Kingstown 12-yard line. Now you can take three shots in the end zone from here, Don. Coach Mike Sassy has seen his team respond to the challenge. They've done a nice job shutting down Mike Wilson so far in this one. I guess that's what you said. I, I fired up the team yesterday. I said it might be the Mike Wilson, Mike Wilson show tomorrow. Show, yeah, so the boys at St. Ray's were watching the game yesterday, and they were all fired up today. <laughs> I've never been put on a bulletin board before. Pass into the end zone to Neil St. Jean. It is a touchdown. St. Ray's as St. Jean gets the touchdown. Third touchdown basketball. Lavoisier on the day with 17 seconds left to go in the first half. That's a huge play right there. So one of the twin brothers, Neil St. Jean, out of the backfield. Labossier just kind of looking, throws it up into the back corner of the end zone. St. Jean, nice job of catching the ball, keeping his feet in bounds. Again, you need the one foot down in high school or college. They go for the one point conversion. Nope, they'll fake it. And now look to go for the two. Half back option, back of the end zone. And it looks, let's see, I haven't no seen call a signal there. yet. Have not seen a signal. They're going to say Out of no on the white line. Very close as Luke McLaughlin caught the ball at the back of the end zone. So Mike's bringing everything out of the playbook today. No sense saving it. That's right. There's nothing to play for next week. One more look. Labossier to St. Jean. Just Labossier kind of, he was open. Yep. He got both feet down he on that one. He did a nice job of getting his feet in the end zone. And take a look at the two-point conversion lined up like they're going to kick it. Instead, a uh, little razzle-dazzle, very close to getting the two. Very difficult to, to see on that angle. you gotta, got to believe the referees were right there to make the call. Just 17 seconds left to go in the first half. And I would think you don't kick the ball. No, you don't want to kick here. the ball deep at all. You just want to squib it, let one of the big hogs pick it up, and get out of the first half at 18-8. to eight. And they'll be thrilled with that score. St. Ray's with a 10-point lead at the half. Neil St. Jean uh, has a twin brother, Nick St. Jean. And uh, usually it's the brother who's the receiver catching more of the passes. That's the 18th touchdown on the season for Neil St. Jean. Lots of action coming up for you at the half. Mary Lou Colombo will have a special interview. Saints got their own ball. <laughs> it even says Saints on it. See? Is, that a, is that unfair? You can do that. Oh, okay. You can do that. is getting ready to kick the ball away, and again, we uh, doubt that they would try to kick the ball deep at I'd all I'd be very here. surprised if they kicked it deep. Kick it, let it squib around a little bit, and get out of the first half. Only 17 seconds left to go. Mike Sassy's done a great job in the first half here, Don. Mixing it up, doing some things I don't think that, are, that were... Uh, that they had done before. Little razzle-dazzle, picking everything up, and kids are responding and playing well. There's Logan picking up the squibber over the middle, gets the ball up to about the 27, where he is dropped. Rebel offense to take over with only 12 ticks left on the clock here in the first half. Again, 
lots coming up for you at the half, so stay tuned. Don't do anything crazy here, Don. With 12 seconds to go, you're going to get the ball back at the start of the second half. Cut your losses, get out of it. Let's regroup at halftime and let's come out and play the second half. Logan in motion. They will pass the ball. Going deep over the middle, looking for Gavin Logan. Makes the connection, gets it down to about the 50-yard line. Still on his feet, drops it to 45, three seconds to go. They will stop the clock. South will use a timeout right here. Only three seconds to go, though, in the half. A little bit of a confidence builder, Mabry, for uh, Avarista is the quarterback, completing his first pass of the day. Nice ball. And it's just running down the sideline there, just trying to make a big play. Make sure you don't fumble. Logan, just a freshman. South Kingstown, 54 yards away from a score here. I think uh, just try to get in Mike Wilson's hand somehow. Maybe. Just uh, try to spring him. See what he can do. A little piece on Gavin Logan there too, John. He's one of the top 15 skiers in the country. And he'll be going to Colorado this winter to uh, compete for a spot someday on the Olympic team. He's really excited about that. Didn't know that. Far from uh, skiing weather here in Rhode Island, we've had two great days weather-wise for football in the Super Bowls here in Rhode Island being uh, early in December. All right, this will be the last play of the first half unless there's a penalty on the defensive side. 18-8, St. Ray's leads. Avarista will pass the ball, just going to try to probably air it out somehow to Wilson, but he won't get it away. We do have a flag on the play. Let's just check. There is a flag. If this is against South Kingstown, the half will end. Ray Brown will make the call. It's against the Rebels. The half is over. St. Ray's will go off. Holding. With an 18 to 8 advantage the at the half, St. Ray's fired up the Rebels from South Kingstown, facing their biggest deficit of the season. It'll be interesting for Bruce Tardiff. He's going to rally the troops. The Rebels down. Tardiff not pleased. He can't be with his team down by 10. We'll be back for halftime festivities here. Division II Super Bowl has been a good one so far. Back to Pierce Stadium in a moment. First Bank and Trust Company believes in developing a strong relationship between the bank and our customers. Our experienced lenders provide prompt decisions on commercial mortgages, credit lines, and SBA financing. Service that is available at First Bank is the feeling that you are our next door neighbor. The atmosphere is high Hawaii, not just the number. Uh, you're treated exceptionally well. Come to Apex for the best selection and the best name brands for you. The Apex award-winning tradition continues with recent awards for the best customer service, the best gift registry, and the best place to buy a gift. So why run around when everything you need is at Apex? Now you can shop at Apex without leaving your home. Visit apexstores.com for safe online shopping. The only site on the web with everything for your home under one roof. If you already own bunk beds, or you're thinking about getting bunk beds for your kids, there's a few things you need to know. Because kids just don't sleep on bunk beds. They climb, they jump, and they roll on them. Use guardrails on both sides of the upper bunks. And every so often, just check the connections to make sure they're still tight. And never put a child under six years old on the upper bunk. I'm Roanne from Off Track Bedding. I'd feel real comfortable with Taylor on our bunk beds. It's time to wake up to a great... Off Track Bedding, the lowest prices every night. It's road-hugging, fuel-injected, wind-blowing through your hair excitement. It's in the turn of the wheel. It's acceleration, performance. It's the edge. The advantage of owning an all-new Volkswagen. At the new Speedcraft Volkswagen, we have the edge. Selling outstanding new and used vehicles with personal care and attention to your needs, making your car buying experience pure pleasure. Drivers wanted customer satisfaction guaranteed at the new Speedcraft Volkswagen Wakefield. Under new ownership, let us show you what the new and the new Speedcraft is all about. You can barely tell this beautiful cast iron stove is not burning wood. It's the Townsend gas stove from Heat and Glow, and it's available at Stovepipe Fireplace Shop. And because it's gas, you can have a fire with just a touch of a button and enjoy Heat and Glow's clean burning, efficient, realistic flame. Save now on these beautiful stoves starting as low as $849. 
Don't miss your chance to save hundreds on Heat and Glow's Townsend Stoves and other products your heart desires at Stovepipe Fireplace Shop. We are at halftime of the Division II Super Bowl. St. Ray's in South Kingstown going at it. We'd like to bring in Mary Lou Palumbo now, who joins us with a very special guest. Mary Lou? Thanks, Don. And once again, I'm here with Vice President and General Manager of Cox Communications, Greg Bickett. And Greg, what an exciting series this has been. Really some terrific football. Oh, absolutely. We're very excited about that. And uh, we also cover hockey, you know. I understand we are uh, lined up for some exciting hockey this spring. Oh, we really are. We are going to be covering the high school hockey championships on March 17th and 18th. And if need be, we'll go to March 20th. So an exciting series to look forward to. It really should be. I think uh, the local community is so uh, oriented towards hockey that this will be a big hit. Oh, and we're all looking forward to uh, covering hockey next year and a lot of other sports, too. And we'll keep our viewers posted. But right now we're into the holiday season and Cox is doing some great things. Uh, just last week, the uh, Toys for Tots was a huge success. Uh, we were very glad to participate in that. And we're also involved in the Giving Tree, I understand? Everybody's getting involved uh, with gifts for needy families in the community, and it really is bringing uh, more Christmas spirit, I think, to our group. And one of the things I think you'll agree with is that the employees really get into it. We have a great turnout. They do get excited about it. It's kind of infectious, and, and people are really getting into the holiday season this year. And tonight, we'll have live coverage of the annual Special Olympics auction right here on Cox 3, and that's always a great success. And a great cause. People are really excited about it. That's right. So tonight you can tune in to the Special Olympics auction right here on Cox 3 starting at 7 o'clock. And Greg, thank you so much. I'd like to wish you a happy holiday season. Merry Christmas, Mary Lou. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mary Lou. We'll be back at the half. More festivities. South Kingstown and St. Ray's going at it. Barbara Nauman from the Province Journal will join us next. You'd never think of giving your kids a mattress in a box spring for Christmas. They'd hate it. But a waterbed? That's different. Every year, Off-Track Bedding delivers hundreds of super single waterbeds to kids for Christmas. And they love them. And they're practical. You're really giving the gift of a good night's rest. And our 11 stores are conveniently located to make your shopping easy. And we're in stock now for Christmas. And you can purchase now with no interest, no payments for three months. So give the lasting gift of a good night's rest. Your kids will love it. Off-Track off Bedding. The lowest prices every night. Got no People are so busy these days that they may only have one chance to see the news of the day. We offer stories that are very important to Rhode Island. You'll get features you won't get anywhere else. You paid for it, consumer alert, and live off the radar. The Rhode Island News Channel, where you can get ABC6 News 24 hours a day. But you've got the time. We've got the news. The Rhode Island News Channel, a service of Cox Communications and ABC6 News. You can barely tell this beautiful cast iron stove is not burning wood. It's the Townsend gas stove from Heat and Glow, and it's available at Stovepipe Fireplace Shop. And because it's gas, you can have a fire with just a touch of a button and enjoy Heat and Glow's clean burning, efficient, realistic flame. Save now on these beautiful stoves starting as low as $849. Don't miss your chance to save hundreds on Heat and Glow's Townsend stoves and other products your heart desires at Stovepipe Fireplace Shop. The Rhode Island Interscholastic League, a voluntary private nonprofit organization, provides educational opportunities for Rhode Island students through interscholastic athletics. The legislative body of the league meets on a monthly basis to provide guidance and support for the over 20,000 student athletes participating in 24 sports. The league is built upon the foundations of character, sportsmanship, and citizenship. Call 272-9844. Mortgage America in Providence at 273-7000.
Welcome back to Pierce Stadium. Uh, surprise to some people, unless you're a St. Ray's Saints fan, 18-8, the undefeated Rebels from South Kingstown trailing in the Division II Super Bowl. Joining me now is Barbara Nauman, the Promotions Director for the Providence Journal, and seventh straight year you guys have sponsored this event, and uh, so far, uh, obviously, you're getting some great play on the field, but uh, why, why does the Journal get involved in events like this? Well, it's seven years for us being a sponsor of the high school football Super Bowls, but for since the late 1948, we have been a sponsor of the All-State Awards program. And I think our sponsorship of high school sports is an endorsement of what we do every day in our sports department. We have sports writers and photographers out there on the field covering high school sports. And um, it's just an endorsement of what they do every day. You must be excited. John Galuli has, uh, I guess, December 26th coming out, listing yep. of the top 100 uh, people that made an impact on high school sports in the state of Rhode Island over this century. That should be something exciting. Yeah, when we talked to him about it, we said, John, do you need any endorsement from the promotion department to try to get scrapbooks and uh, folks sending in some materials? He went, no, God, no, don't ask for that. He says, we're overwhelmed with all that information. He said, but publicizing it and getting it out there and letting people know about it is important. And not just football, too, that you sponsor. Also, uh, hockey is another event that yep. you guys... We sponsor the high school hockey championships and also the... Uh, girls volleyball championships and the class A and B baseball championships with our friends at uh, McCoy Stadium, Tuckett Red Sox. Why are high school sports important to the journal? High school sports is um, really a foundation of one of the reasons why a lot of our readers are in the newspapers, school news, um, sports, family is a, a large demographic group of um, our readers. Do we expect uh, continued support for high school sports? Oh, most Can definitely. Can make it the 8th, ninth, 10th, moving on to the next millennium Most here? definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, every year, I mean, I've been here for the past seven years for the high school football Super Bowls, and each year the uh, the games bring something new to the, to the foreground. We went double overtime yesterday, and uh, it was a unique game. Thankfully, we had some lights here. The other game, um, the score was 43-46, and they were praying that they weren't right. going in overtime because it was getting dark with no lights up at Bryant. And uh, exciting time of the year, too, with the the entire newspaper, too, with the, uh, the new millennium on, on the horizon, too. I guess there will be a lot of exciting things in the journal this last month. Most definitely. I think John's going to be covering, too, the, the impact of uh, girls' sports and uh, a lot of things that change the Interscholastic League. We work very closely with the Interscholastic League in a lot of things that we do. Um, we have the MVP award today that's mm -hmm. uh, highlighting Jean Bonacorsi, which is a retired uh, sports editor who has passed away several years ago. And um, we work closely with them for the Sportsmanship Award. That's one of the, uh, the foundations or their mission statement is to uh, include good sportsmanship. So every year as part of our high school uh, All-State Awards program, we hand out a Sportsmanship Award to a boys and girls team for that season. Well, thank you very much, Barbara, and thank you to the Providence Journal for their support of high school athletics here in the state of Rhode Island. Division II Super Bowl still at the half, and St. Ray's with a 10-point lead. We'll be back more halftime festivities. We'll be back at Pierce in just a moment. The Rhode Island Interscholastic League, a voluntary private nonprofit organization, provides educational opportunities for Rhode Island students through interscholastic athletics. The legislative body of the league meets on a monthly basis to provide guidance and support for the over 20,000 student athletes participating in 24 sports. The league is built upon the foundations of character, sportsmanship, and citizenship. Call 272-9844. I am working towards my bachelor's degree in accounting at the University of Rhode Island. I get free tuition assistance by being a member of the Rhode Island Air National Guard. Thank you, Rhode Island Air National Guard. By being part of the Rhode Island Air National Guard, I get to attend free state college courses at the base. Currently, I'm working on a degree in sociology. Gracias a la Guardia Nacional de Rhode Island. It's experience. It's education. It's the Rhode Island Air National Guard. At South County Mortgage, we're training the loan officers of the future. With over 200 programs, we've got to start them early. You need a mortgage, you need cash. Call South County Mortgage. For money for any reason. We specialize in residential mortgage financing, low fixed rate mortgages, one-on-one -on -one service, and quick closings. No matter what your credit history, South County has a program to fit your needs. So call the pros. South County Mortgage, better than bank rates, better than bank service. Ho, ho, ho! Look at it! Ooh, it's the Colonel Dude, Barry Gibbs! Right now, the
the Colonel's gonna give you a holiday deal and a free sandwich. The Duke of Drumsticks, Sultan of Sandwiches. Get 10 pieces of KFC original recipe for just $8.99. Plus a coupon to try the new original recipe sandwich free. Colonel's cool, Colonel's cool. Actually, I'm cold. At KFC, we do chicken right. The holiday season has begun, and it's time to choose that special gift for that hard-to-buy-for person. Quaker Lane Tool has hundreds of gift ideas to choose from, and this year, we're making it even easier. Just have your special someone fill out a Quaker Lane Tool gift registration card. With such a wide selection of brand names, let them pick their favorite tools so you don't have to. Merry Christmas from Quaker Lane Tool. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Welcome back to Pierce Stadium. St. Ray's 18 to 8 lead over the South Kingstown Rebels at the half. Joining me now, director of the Interscholastic League, Dick Lynch. And uh, Dick, second straight day, second straight close game. Oh, this is great. This has been a, a great uh, series. This, uh, yesterday's game obviously was one of the best I've seen in a long time, and today's a real good one too. This Sir Rayfield's doing a good job. I didn't. I'm, I'm quite, quite surprised at the fact that the, they're winning at halftime. Uh, for several years now, uh, Cox has brought the Division One Super Bowl, and then the uh, the other divisions uh, do a little bit of a rotation. This year happens to be the Division Two Super Bowl. Got a great, great game going on, but it, it, we also feature some of the other uh, divisions yes, also. Yes, uh, obviously Cox would like to do all four, but that's not possible. What uh, what happens is that you know, we do Division One each year, and then we rotate the other divisions because you just can't break down the trucks and go and go to another site. So we'll do Division Four next year along with Division One, and then we rotate back to Division Three. How about the, the sports on Cox? Is it something that helps the Interscholastic oh, League? Oh, I think it gives us exposure. I think it gives the kids. More importantly, it, it's for the youngsters. Uh, it gives them exposure, and I'm sure they go home at night and, and watch the replay being played, and uh, uh, it's a great thrill for them, I'm sure. And also hockey we'll be doing later in the year, and too. Hockey, and uh, that's, uh, if we could ever duplicate what we had last year when we went to three games because of the, uh, you know, it's the best out of three, and we had to go to three games. It was very, very exciting, and I think that's it's great for hockey, and it's great for high school athletics and high school kids. Mm -hmm. you know, we talked about yesterday, too, that narrow against the Tiverton game. That was a that was a barn burner too. We didn't have Ooh. that one here on Cox Three, but uh, that turned out to be just as good of a game that we had Absolutely. here. Absolutely, it's just a little different. And this was a defensive struggle. That was an offensive struggle. 46 to 43. The big the big thing we had we were concerned about up there was that there are no lights on that right. field. And by the time the game ended, if we had to go overtime, we'd have been in trouble. And right now, also the uh, Division Three Super Bowl going on. Uh, Conley Stadium. Is that the first time you've used Conley Stadium? Yes, it is. And uh, that's an outstanding stadium for those people who have been around like I have for a long time. Uh, that was one of the best stadiums in the state, and it still has the probably the best vantage point in, in, the, in the state. Right now, that game is 7-7 seven to seven at halftime, so that's, we got a good one going there as well. Uh, you must be happy also the way things have gone on the field so far in these Super Bowls. Very cleanly played, good sportsmanship, and good officiating, too, and I know officiating is an important part of what you guys do at the Interscholastic League. It is, and, and uh, I, I was very happy with the crew that uh, was out there yesterday, and certainly this crew is doing an, a very good job today as well. Uh, but the kids came to play football and, and for what the purpose that it's intended to be. And uh, they're doing the best that they can, and they recognize the fact that the other kids are doing the best that they can as well. Well, Dick Lynch, thank you very much. It's a uh, great first half so far. He, he, he keeps bringing us good games. Keep it up, Dick. It's my alma mater against your alma mater today. Don't forget that. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> I, won't, I won't root for South Kingstown until it's over. But anyways, we'll be back at the half. Dick leads Don 18 to 8. We'll be back. First half highlights. Good job. I earned college credits for my military training in aircraft maintenance. With these credits and the education benefits of the Rhode Island Air National Guard, I'm on my way to earning my associate's degree in aircraft maintenance technology. Because I belong to the Rhode Island Air National Guard, I get to attend free state college courses on my base in North Kingstown. I'm pursuing a degree in education. You can receive your college education for little or no cost by being a member of the Rhode Island Air National Guard. Call today. First Bank and Trust Company believes in developing a strong relationship between the bank and our customers. Our experienced lenders provide prompt decisions on commercial mortgages, credit lines, and SBA financing. Like First Bank and Trust, that has confidence in their developer. They gave us the opportunity to perform beyond even our own expectations. Our relationship with First Bank and Trust was that of working with a partner. If you already own bunk beds, or you're thinking about getting bunk beds for your kids, there's a few things you need to know. Because kids just don't sleep on bunk beds. They climb, they jump, and they roll on them. 
Use guardrails on both sides of the upper bunks. And every so often, just check the connections to make sure they're still tight. And never put a child under six years old on the upper bunk. I'm Rowan from Off Track Bedding. I'd feel real comfortable with Taylor on our bunk beds. It's time to wake up to a great... Off Track Bedding, the lowest prices every night. You can barely tell this beautiful cast iron stove is not burning wood. It's the Townsend gas stove from Heat and Glow, and it's available at Stovepipe Fireplace Shop. And because it's gas, you can have a fire with just a touch of a button and enjoy Heat and Glow's clean burning, efficient, realistic flame. Save now on these beautiful stoves starting as low as $849. Don't miss your chance to save hundreds on Heat and Glow's Townsend stoves and other products your heart desires at Stovepipe Fireplace Shop. When you're on the go, each and every day, you need a place to shop that has everything. All this week at Apex, it's the Fashion Blowout Sale. Save up to 50% on women's, men's, and kids. Everything you need is right here at the Apex Fashion Blowout Sale. For online shopping, remember apexstores.com. Apex, everything for you and your family under one roof. There's something for everyone at Apex. We're back to the Division II Super Bowl at the half. St. Ray's on top of South Kingstown, 18-8 in what has to be a little bit of a, a shocker. We know that uh, St. Ray's is a very capable club. Their only loss during the season was to South Kingstown, but uh, they've pretty much dominated the action, Terry Lynch, so far. So far, they have come out and taken it right to South Kingstown. First touchdown, the half roll to the right, screen back to the left. Davis goes in, untouched into the end zone. Basically setting the tone. That was a third and 11 play right there too, Don. So they set the tone early on what they were going to do all day. Just their third offensive play after an opening kickoff drive. Got the opening kickoff return. Got it down to the 18. Next possession. Again, it's to Davis here in the second quarter. He just runs a flat route. Catches the ball. And basically just falls into the end zone. Wilson has no shot of stopping him there. Put them up 12 nothing at that point. Yeah, two missed conversions. South Kingstown finally recovered a fumble around midfield. Justin Ord recovered the fumble, and then Ord taking it home. Run the big fella up in there, and I think you might see a little bit more of that in the second half. Try to wear down St. Ray's and stay on schedule if you're South Kingstown. South good on the two-point conversion, making it 12-8 uh, to eight at that point. But the St. Ray's Saints will be heard from once more. No timeouts. Ball on about the 20-yard line. And uh, Labasia throws it up. St. Jean, nice catch. Both feet in the end zone. He's got 102 total yards at the, at the uh, half right now, Don. Labasia, three touchdown passes. Neil St. Jean, the 12-yard grab. 18-8 to eight is our halftime score. That two-point conversion failed. It's the first time all year South Kingstown has given up three touchdowns in a game. Offensively, you look at the numbers, passing for St. Grace has really been the difference. Yeah, and the total yards, as we can see, it's equal. 151 to 150 time of possession. Turnovers, basically it's an equal ball game. Although St. Ray's has the 10-point lead at the half. And also the opening kickoff of the game where they got it down to the 18-yard line, set them up for the easy score. And set the tone for what the game was about to happen. They're just coming at South Kingstown in different ways and uh, basically throwing caution to the wind and let's say, hey, let's have some fun. And, and there is Davis. He has two touchdown receptions so far in this game. Will he add to that total here in the second half? He hopes so. The Rebels from South Kingstown trail at the half of the first time all season. 18 to 8. Back with more of the halftime and second half in a moment. The holiday season has begun, and it's time to choose that special gift for that hard-to-buy-for person. Quaker Lane Tool has hundreds of gift ideas to choose from, and this year we're making it even easier. Just have your special someone fill out a Quaker Lane Tool gift registration card. With such a wide selection of brand names, let them pick their favorite tools so you don't have to. Merry Christmas from Quaker Lane Tool. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. At South County Mortgage, we're training the loan officers of the future. With over 200 programs, we've got to start them early. You need a mortgage, you need cash. Call some kind of mortgage. For money for any reason. We specialize in residential mortgage financing, low fixed rate mortgages, one-on-one -on -one service, and quick closings. No matter what your credit history, South County has a program to fit your needs. So call the pros. South County Mortgage, better than bank rates, better than bank service. We're back to Pierce Stadium. St. Ray's on the field getting ready to go out for the uh, 
second half meeting of the captains, the Rebels, yet to show up here on the field as we see them just coming out right now. It was a long half for Bruce Tardiff, as I'm sure he uh, gave it to his team a little bit over there, trying to fire him up. First time the Rebels have trailed at the half as they are ranked fourth in New England, the latest Nesson poll, and um, stay in that standing to stay undefeated to win a Super Bowl. They're going to have to find a way, first of all, to score a little more, but I think defensing the pass game is going to be the key. So far, they've pretty much passed it well against the Rebels. They sure have, and that's the key. They've got to stay with what they can do, and that's run the football, and they're not going to change a whole lot. They've got to come up with some defensive answers now to stop what St. Ray's has been doing a great job with in the first half, and that's throwing the football. They've got 125 yards of passing in the first half, and they've got to come up with a way to shut that down. That's really the only way the St. Ray's has moved the ball in the first half. No heads hanging low. You see Mike Wilson, number two. He's pretty fired up as the Rebels come out on the field. Uh, they don't look to be down and out in the least. Justin Auto has the one touchdown for South Kingstown and also a fumble recovery as Bruce Tardis' team comes back on the field. Just about two minutes to go till we get started here in the second half. Rebels down 18 to eight. St. Ray's lost in the Division II Super Bowl to Mount Hope last year, 15-14. And also they knocked South Kingstown out, who was uh, one of the favorites last year in the semifinals. So the Rebels looking for some payback in St. Ray's, trying to capitalize on a second straight Super Bowl appearance. And St. Ray's basically has to do what they did in the first half, Don. Mix it up, pass and run, throw all caution to the wind, let it all hang out. They're doing a nice job on offense of different formations and, and running counters and running sweeps and reverses and passes off the reverse, basically throwing the kitchen sink at South Kingstown, and it's it proved to, to give them 18 points at the half. And the meeting of the captains here for the second half. I just want to know how come South Kingstown was favored in this one, and I went to South Kingstown. Your father didn't tell me that he went to St. Ray's until his team was leading at the half. You always got to see what the scoreboard says at the halftime. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go as uh, the captains are meeting out at midfield. Right, South King, half, excuse me, St. Ray's will take the win in, this direction, rather. Guys, right in the here. second half or in the third quarter half, here. Gray right, Brown, your lead official out there with the captain, and uh, that's it. Rebels, got to get pumped up. They are to fulfill their destiny, what they feel is their destiny. 18 to 8, they trail. And again, it's a little bit different for the South Kingstown. Hasn't been in a close no. game all season long, and uh, things are a little bit different. As we saw with East Providence yesterday, there was no doubt the tighter sideline was East Providence. They hadn't been in a close game, and Hendrickson was loose. So the vice versa here today. It's, it's going to be St. Ray's, the loose team. South going to be feeling a little tight. Yeah, and, and I didn't think it was, and according to Bruce, talking to him before the game, he didn't think his kids were tight. I thought they played a little bit tight in the first half. And St. Ray's, as we said, they were loosey-goosey, and they just... Let it all hang out in the first half. This is an important series yep. right here for South Kingstown offensively as it is for St. Ray's defensively. First score in the second half could decide this one. Rebels will get the ball first. St. Ray's will kick the ball away with the wind at their back. About a 10 mile an hour breeze here at Pierce Stadium in East Providence. Been many football games played here this season. This will be the last outdoor sporting event at Pierce Stadium, which has been a great venue for many of the interscholastic league events, including soccer and football. Mike Wilson yet to score a touchdown in this game, and he scored at least two in every game he has played in this season. Kickoff goes out of bounds. And that one uh, will be a penalty against St. Ray's for kicking the ball out of bounds. And they go pick up the tee and try it again. Illegal procedure on the kickers. By choice, they'll replay the kick. So now it'll be kicked from the 35-yard line. Game plan for Mike Sassi's, uh, I would say, work to perfection so far. Yeah, let it go. <laughs> he, he did a great job of preparing his kids for the first half. He's got to make some half halftime adjustments. Come out and play in the second half. He's done a great job so far. 
offensively near the end of the first half. South Kingston able to, as we said, establish that fullback, and Ord became an offensive factor. See if St. Ray's makes some adjustments to take, you know, try to stop Ord. But if you do, then all of a sudden you're paying a little less attention That's to right. the dangerous Mike Wilson. And, I, I, you know, let Ord run the ball and let him wear these guys down a little bit. Gavin Logan taking the kickoff on the 15, up over the 30 to the 35. Ankle tackle as he is dropped down there by McLaughlin. Make that McGowan, Sean McGowan with the tackle. And it'll be first and 10 on the 36 for South Kingstown. Important series right here, as we said, for South Kingstown. Bruce, see how, what kind of halftime adjustments they made. Lone back in the backfield once again will be Justin Aud, the fullback. Gavin Logan, the freshman, in motion, handoff to Aud. They drop Aud, first time all day that they've snuffed him out of the line of scrimmage. There you see a halftime adjustments. Uh, South Kingstown going to come out and try to establish a fullback. And I think St. Ray's knowing that, clogging up the middle a little bit more. Eric Hersberger made the tackle, number 30, the junior. Second down, make it nine for South. South Kingstown using double tight end set. This time Wilson, the motion back. Wilson holds on to the football. Gets it up to about the 40. Good gang tackling though for St. Ray's. He's had very little room to work with. He sure has, and one of the things that they're doing too is they're taking St. Jean, Nick, uh, Neil St. Jean, number 21, almost spying where Mike Wilson is. I, I really watched him on that play, and as soon as Mike went in motion, he kind of slid. He seems like he's the spy for Mike Wilson today, and he was right in on the tackle. And there he goes, making the drop right there. So, South Kings down third and seven right now. First possession here in the second half, trailing 18 to eight to St. Rayfield's Academy. Logan now on the inside handoff, and he'll be dropped short of the first down on the 43-yard line. The Rebels forced to punt the ball away. Key defensive series by the Saints. Just an inside counter here. Inside Gavin handle. takes that thing and just got to hit that a little bit harder. Yep. It looked like there was a seam there going for it here. Fourth and two, the Rebels confident, I guess, in their defensive play. They will go for it here on fourth and two. They will not punt the ball away as they would be kicking the ball into the wind, so showing a little respect, too. They're going to come that offensive line and bring it home. Three backs in the backfield. Mike yeah. Wilson will be dropped. St. Ray's takes over on possession. The defense comes up. We'll be back. St. Ray's on offense when we return. Oh, ho, ho, Ooh, it's the Colonel dude, Barry Gibbs. Right now, the Colonel's going to give you a holiday deal and a free sandwich. The Duke of Drumsticks, Sultan of Sandwiches. Get 10 pieces of KFC Original Recipe for just $8.99. Plus a coupon to try the new Original Recipe sandwich free. Colonel's cool, Colonel's cool. Actually, I'm cold. At KFC, we do chicken right. Call Mortgage America in Providence at 273-7000. Saints with their first offensive possession in the second half with a 10-point lead. Just stopped South Kings down on fourth and two, and they've got the ball on the 44. South putting on a little heat. Here comes Langlois, backside screen downfield, nearly picked off as they attempt to get the ball out to Davis. A little bit of rush that time from South Kingston. And that's the same concept that they've been using in the first half where they half roll the quarterback. They bring um, motion man, run the flat route. Remember what happens off of this. They ran that backside screen before, so that's coming. Well defense by the Rebels, setting up a second down and 10. The Bossiero, three touchdown passes in that first half. Two to Davis. 
One to St. Jean, who's in motion right now. Rodas the lone back in the backfield. Big rush coming on by South. Yep. There's Davis getting the screen, and he is wide open. He could go to the house. One man to beat down the sideline. Davis with the touchdown catch. 44-yard screen play. Did they set that up on that previous pass they play? They sure did, because they've been running that play all day, and that's the second time they've come back with that screen for the touchdown. Davis, third touchdown reception on the day. St. Ray's rolling away and taking on South in a big way. They put it to him. They set that screen up nice. They let the offensive line come through, and Davis just picked it and went. South King, Untouched in the end zone. South Sorry. King's down in a hole that they have not faced anything like this so far this season. They will try the point after. The kick is up. And that is a key kick because it makes it a 17-point differential, which is three scores, which South will need back to Pierce Stadium. I am working towards my bachelor's degree in accounting at the University of Rhode Island. I get free tuition assistance by being a member of the Rhode Island Air National Guard. Thank you, Rhode Island Air National Guard. By being part of the Rhode Island Air National Guard, I get to attend free state college courses at the base. Currently, I'm working on a degree in sociology. Gracias a la Guardia Nacional de Rhode Island. It's experience. It's education. It's the Rhode Island Air National Guard. First Bank and Trust Company believes in developing a strong relationship between the bank and our customers. Our experienced lenders provide prompt decisions on commercial mortgages, credit lines, and SBA financing. Service that is available at First Bank is the feeling that you are our next door neighbor. The atmosphere is high Hawaii, not just the number. Uh, you're treated exceptionally well. All right, Terry, we thought we could have a blowout in this one. Maybe South Kingstown will beat St. Ray's 27 nothing during the regular season. Maybe be able to repeat that feat. There's no way anyone thought that the Saints would come marching into such a big lead on South. No, I, I, we wouldn't call this one. If, if it was 25-8 to 8 South Kingstown, we'd say, you know what, it's going the way it's supposed to go. But South, uh, excuse me, St. Ray's has come in here and just done everything right today, starting from that opening kickoff, Don, and they've set the tone and carried the play for the whole first half and into the third quarter. Still plenty of time for that potent South Kingstown offense that has averaged 40 points per game. They've been held to eight so far today. Mike Wilson with his least offensive output on the season. Kickoff goes deep down the field. It's going to be picked up by Gavin Logan on the 15-yard line. Has a little bit of hole up the middle. Logan eventually dropped down on the 24-yard line with the Rebels take over for a few 10. Let's go back, take another look at the touchdown for St. Ray's that gave them the 25 to 8 lead. Cabassier in the half roll again. Davis, who was the wing back, coming underneath the rush. Get the screen out in front of him. Flaherty almost makes the tackle. That's the Bossier's going to be half oh. <laughs> Fourth touchdown. Fourth touchdown pass. pass of the day. Yes, he is pumped. <laughs> Handoff goes up the middle to Wilson, short gain on the play. And South Kingstown all season long has had to do nothing different offensively. Their basic scheme has always worked. Is it possible for them to change things at this point and come up with something totally different? Or do you, do you it's just... hard. It's hard because you, you gotta go with you're into the 13th game of the season now, and you gotta go with what you do the best. And that what they do the best is line up in double tight, two wings, and run. It hurts you sometimes when you haven't been in close games during the season. Right. You just, you know, haven't had to face it. And really, St. Ray's hasn't been in a ton of close games either because other than the loss to South Kingston, 27 nothing. you know, most of their victories have been by substantial margins. Aravista drops in the backfield for a loss. South Kingstown looking for a rare pass play, and Avarista was dropped, and now South facing a third and long. You got Brian Stacy coming off the backside. They they try to flood to the to the left. Stacy just grabs him by the ankle. He came untouched off the right side of the offensive line. Third and 14 now for South Kingstown. Eight minutes to go, third quarter. Rebels trailing 25 to eight. Third 
and 14. Evers drops back, throws it, picked off. St. Jean with the interception. St. Ray's returning the ball, and we're going to have a penalty flag down on the return. And a little extracurricular activity afterwards, and we have South a second Kingstown flag. Down. South Kingstown is losing its composure at this point. Mike Wilson and St. Ray's has gotten to the point where they have forced South Kingstown to do something that they don't want to do, and that's throw the football uncharacteristic of what they've done all year. Nick St. Jean with the interception. Neil's brother comes up with the INT. We should have two penalties, probably one on the return, and then an unsportsmanlike conduct call afterwards. But either way, St. Ray's is going to be in position to get a would have to be a game-stealing score here. And, and, and the referees have to take control at this point and not let this thing get out of hand. Nick St. Jean with the interception there had 86 tackles during the regular season. Brother Neal, a leader on offense, and Nick, one of the stalwarts on defense. We'll go to the field, see what the calls are. On the return, holding on the offense. on the defense. Yep, so what we thought. So they got a hold on the return. Take a look at this. Arborista hasn't had to pass a lot this season, threw it into tight coverage. Nice job by St. Jean coming off his outside guy to, to Wilson. And they had a hold there first, and then afterwards a little bit of activity. So uh, we'll see where the, after the penalties go each way, where the ball ends up. Mike Wilson got tied up with, appeared to be with St. Jean there at one point, and a uh, personal foul went against South Kingstown, 22 to the plus side, and turnovers to St. Ray's. Got the ball in great field position here on the 16-yard line. South's defense got to come up big now. Huge. They don't, they don't have a choice but to stop them here and not give up any points. First and 10 from the 16. St. Ray's already up by 17 points. Chance to add to the total. Neil St. Jean deep in the eye takes the pitch. Hands off to brother Nick St. Jean coming on the reverse. He's dropped by Langlois down at the 11 yard line. Nice play by Andrew. Nice play there by Andrew Langlois. He shed the blocker and made the tackle. Neil to Nick, a little twin killing by the St. Jean boys. Ball down to the 12-yard line, gain of four on the play, second and six. Hand off to Rodas, the fullback. We have a flag. Flag in the backfield, probably. Yep, and it's going to be against St. Ray's. So the motion penalty will march at five yards, bring up a second and 12. On Ray the Brown offense. signaling the motion. Second Remains second down. Again, a fairly clean played game uh, today. For just the most much part. like we had yesterday. Ball back on the 18. Neil St. Jean deep in the eye. He comes in motion. Heavy side, back rush by Kitchell, but they get it out to Nick St. Jean. He's free, down into South Territory, all the way down to the four-yard line. A little bit of a wide receiver screen there. That's all they're doing, they're just throwing the ball out there and blocking with the uh, wide receiver and the slot man. Two on two. Major concern right there for Bruce Tardis' face. Take another look at it. Kitchell almost got home on this one, too. He just, just barely got to Labasia before he got that one off. And I'll tell you, Labasia is doing a nice job running this offense today. Labasia, four touchdown passes. Three have gone to Davis. It is first goal to go from the four-yard line for St. Ray's. Pitch to Butler. Butler sweeping outside. Wilson trying to stop him short of the end zone. Gets it down to about the one-yard line. Three. 
Take another look at Butler's head for glory. Sweep and run to the corner. St. Jean doing a nice job on Flaherty blocking there, and Wilson coming up with a touchdown saving tackle, dropping them just at the one. Second down, one yard to go. The air calling signals, handoff, St. Jean, touchdown. St. Ray's running away with this one. 6.02 left to go in the third quarter. They lead the Rebels from South, South Keats down 31 to 8. You know, we look at each other. <laughs> Extra point attempt upcoming from Rodas. St. Jean's second touchdown of the day, first on the ground. We have a penalty. South has only given up in a game this year. Two touchdowns, the most they've given up yeah. to this one. Already five touchdowns for St. Ray. Well, they're just getting it, they're getting it handed to them. We'll uh, see what's going on on the field on the extra point attempt. And it's going to be a personal foul call against St. Ray's. Didn't see maybe a little bit of a taunting call yeah, possibly down there. It was going on. Nothing. Personal foul on the offense. Nothing nothing physical. Maybe it could have been uh, St. Ray's, you know, yeah. whooping it up a little bit, right. having the lead. It's a long extra point. 35 yarder. <laughs> 35 yard extra point attempt coming up. The kick is up. Everything going right for St. Ray's. 32 to 8. They lead the Rebels. Back to Pierce Stadium in just a moment. If you already own bunk beds, or you're thinking about getting bunk beds for your kids, there's a few things you need to know. Because kids just don't sleep on bunk beds. They climb, they jump, and they roll on them. Use guardrails on both sides of the upper bunks. And every so often, just check the connections to make sure they're still tight. And never put a child under six years old on the upper bunk. I'm Rowan from Off Track Betting. I'd feel real comfortable with Taylor on our bunk beds. It's time to wake up to a great... Off Track Betting, the lowest prices every night. At South County Mortgage, we're training the loan officers of the future. With over 200 programs, we've got to start them early. You need a mortgage, you need cash. Call South County Mortgage. For money for any reason. We specialize in residential mortgage financing, low fixed rate mortgages, one-on-one -on -one service, and quick closings. No matter what your credit history, South County has a program to fit your needs. So call the pros. South County Mortgage, better than bank rates, better than bank service. Nick St. Jean with the interception, setting up the touchdown run by brother Neil St. Jean. I wonder who's the older one. I don't know. Um, Should have asked that. <laughs> Either way, they are putting it on South Kingstown today. The St. Jean twin brothers coming through as they have helped their team to a 32 to 8 advantage over South Kingstown. Again, the Rebels average 40 points a game. They have been held to 8 so far. And 32 points, that's almost, um, well, they only gave up 99 during the entire season. 99 over 12 games, so they're doing it. And, uh, you know, this is the point in a game where you'd probably have to come back with a passing offense, and that's not the type of offense no. that Bruce Tardiff has. It just got him in trouble back there. They were down, and, and they tried to throw the ball, and they got a pick and gave up another score. I, I don't know if he has any answers right now. That's, <laughs> that's an empty feeling when you're on the sidelines and you don't have any answers. Somehow they've got to get Mike Wilson free where he can uh, use his speed and quickness. But St. Ray's has done a great job of bottling him up. Kickoff taken on the one-yard line by Mike Wilson. Wilson darting up the middle, gets all across the 30, and he is dropped down on the 32-yard line. First and 10 for South Kingstown. Both coaches working the officials on both sidelines. Mike 
success. He got his team to the Super Bowl last year and lost by a point. And got his team back here this year and he's doing a great job. All right, third offensive set for the Rebels here in the second half. They've come up empty. Oh, the fullback up the middle. Nice eight-yard gain. The two possessions here in the first half, uh, one on downs and one on interception. Ray's getting the ball back. Just running that inside fullback dive. You know, it, you come into the second half and you, and you give up the ball on a possession on your own side of the 50, and then you turn the ball over inside the 20. Those things don't bode very well when you're down at the point at the halftime anyway. Mike Wilson with a handoff to the outside, gets a first down, a little bit more over midfield. Knocked out on the 48. And with this two down, you know, there's a quarter and almost a half to go. But South Kingstown really has to do a good job of using clock management from this point on. Because you, as you said, they need three scores. And we have Mike Wilson injured. It appears to be on the far sideline as he hit ha hard over on the South Kingstown side. And uh, he's out of the game right now, so we'll keep an eye on Mike Wilson. I didn't see what happened on the... Sometimes uh, landing on the football will win the person a little bit. Take another look. It is on the far side. See if we can pick up what happened to Wilson. It landed yes. on his knee or something. I don't yeah. know. Now that makes odd all, all the more a factor in this drive. As they're uh, working on the hamstring of Mike Wilson. Devastating blow that would be for South Kingston. If he can't return, yeah. uh, not much could of a, a chance. Could be a hamstring, could be just a cramp. You don't know, you don't like to speculate, but hey, now they're going to use Odd, and, and now Gavin Logan has to step up to the plate and, and be more than a freshman. Odd, lone back, he is the fullback. On the wings, Logan, that's Kitchell in motion. Hand off to Logan up the middle. Inside the 40, busting out to the 35. Getting inside the 30, cutting back cross field. He will be knocked down on the 22-yard line. Heavy hit, but Gavin Logan, the freshman, finally making the big run for South. Their best offensive play of the day. Right on cue, he just had to step up and just run the inside counter. And running more aggressive, too, as you yeah. say. He ran a little bit tentative early in the uh, first half of play. And now with Mike Wilson being out, I think he understands now it's gonna, the load's going to go on his shoulders along with Odd. We see Mike Wilson standing on the far side up against the South Kingstown bench. Just Stretching that hamstring. Continue to work on him. Possibly could be a, could be a cramp, and uh, he seems to be all right over there. So he's walking on his own power. And uh, again, could be a cramp. He sees a lot Looks of action. Like a more both. of a cramp over there than, yeah. a, than a hamstring pull. Both offensively and defensively, he's out on the field at all times. That's him jumping on the outside there and appears to be ready to go. Four twenty-four left to go. Third quarter. Rebels down thirty-two to eight. He's odd to pull back. Immediately hit. Good penetration by number 24, Luke McLaughlin, the leader on defense. It's the first time his name's been called all day, and the fans respond. Little chair, Luke. <laughs> Ball down to the 21 yard line, second and nine for South. Logan, the freshman in motion. He takes the pitch. He's bottled up. He's going to be dropped for a five-yard loss. Stacy, one of those in on the play. They ran option here, and, and Everista really never threatened the corner, just kind of pitched it out there, and a lot of white shirts. Nice Stacey job. again. And yeah, nice job by Sean McGowan kind of sealed the corner, so it gave him nothing to do out there, number 44, and Stacy Kane. He flies around on the backside. Yeah, he's done well for himself out there. So we're down to third and 13 for South Kingstown. Definite two down territory, though, for South here. As they uh, spread the field slightly. Wilson's back in the game, John. Wilson, top of the screen. We're looking for him. There's a wide receiver screen to Wilson. And he is going to be dropped after about a seven-yard pickup, setting up fourth down and three for South. No doubt they will go for it. 
Good to see him back out there. They split him out wide and just threw him a, a, a one, two yard hitch and let him make some plays. So with the spot goes, it's gonna be about a fourth and a, fourth and a long four. South needs this conversion. Odd, blown back in the backfield. Ball hit up in the air. Goes down incomplete. St. Ray's takes over on down. For all of the latest scores and sports headlines, check out the sports channel on OSO.com. From the P Bruins to the Patriots, local and national. OSO.com brings it home with just one click. And St. Ray's is bringing it home so far. Looks like they're going to be bringing a Super Bowl championship back to Pawtucket. 32 to 8, they lead with 219 left to go in the third. Here's Butler taking the handoff up the middle. Langlois with the finishing hit on that one. Flaherty originally had him by the ankle. Four yard gain. Clock is the ally now of St. Ray's. They can just grind it out. Well, they got the lead in this one by passing. Four touchdown passes in this one, but like you say, now is the type of time of game and the type of style you want to do is keep the ball on the ground, nothing fancy. Don't turn it over. Yep, chew up the clock. Flaherty, one of the defensive leaders for South. Butler takes the handoff again. He's short of the first down. It'll be about a third and one. We're at 1.30 left to go in the third quarter of play. 24 points the differential. South would need three touchdowns along with three two-point conversions. It'll take a near perfect fourth quarter of play. Third and two. Hand off to Davis. Picks up a key first down, but a late flag comes in on that one. Late flag, and that may cost the, Ray, the St. Ray's Saints the first down. And it indeed will. Holding call marches them back. It's too bad, too. It seemed to come late in the play, maybe where he'd already gotten yeah. past the first, first yard marker. Now you got to first down, Mark. Put in a little dilemma here now with Mike Sassy. You really don't offense. want to throw the ball. Repeat, you don't, you know, you're up 24 points, um, but you're third and long here, so you may have to throw it. Take a look. Davis taking the handoff up the middle and try to see where the, the hold occurred there in the middle. Couldn't tell. And again, the wind is at St. Ray's back, so if you're going to punt the ball, too, you want to make sure you get the uh, kickoff here in the third quarter. Play take advantage of that win. Third and 11. Butler in motion. Hand off up the middle. Breaking free. First down and plenty more to go as McGowan. Great call that time. They put McGowan at the fullback slot. Great call. They, what they did, Don, is they put the... They put Butler in motion, which, and they half roll them. So you're thinking screen, or you're thinking that flood route. And they just ran a draw to McGowan, picked up a huge first down for St. Ray's. Frustrating day too. Josh White had a shot at him, slipped out of his grasp. White had 72 tackles during the regular season, but St. Ray's with the first down, and uh, see if they get another playoff here with under 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. Probably have to run one more. Davis inside, White making up for it with a big stick. But St. Ray's will take it to the fourth quarter with a lead, 32 to eight. Third quarter is over. St. Ray's just 12 minutes away from an upset victory in the Division II Rhode Island High School Super Bowl. Bruce Charter got to pull out a miracle for somehow the Rebels to keep a perfect season going. We'll be back for the fourth quarter in a moment.
It's road-hugging, fuel-injected, wind-blowing through your hair excitement. It's in the turn of the wheel. It's acceleration, performance. It's the edge. The advantage of owning an all-new Volkswagen. At the new Speedcraft Volkswagen, we have the edge. Selling outstanding new and used vehicles with personal care and attention to your needs, making your car buying experience pure pleasure. Drivers wanted customer satisfaction guaranteed at the new Speedcraft Volkswagen Wakefield under new ownership. Let us show you what the new and the new Speedcraft is all about. Come to Apex for the best selection and the best name brands for you. The Apex award-winning tradition continues with recent awards for the best customer service, the best gift registry, and the best place to buy a gift. So why run around when everything you need is at Apex? Now you can shop at Apex without leaving your home. Visit apexstores.com for safe online shopping. The only site on the web with everything for your home under one roof. Ho, 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 look out! Oh, it's the Colonel dude, Barry Gifts. Right now, the Colonel's gonna give you a holiday deal and a free sandwich. The Duke of Drumsticks, Sultan of Sandwiches. Get 10 pieces of KFC original recipe for just $8.99. Plus a coupon to try the new original recipe sandwich free. Colonel's cool, Colonel's cool. Actually, I'm cold. At KFC, we do chicken right. Call Mortgage America in Providence at 273-7000. That's your first one. All right, we're back. We had a uh, five-yard penalty against St. Ray's for jumping the gun, so it will be second down and 15 yards right now for the Saints. Start of the first quarter, first play. Butler takes the handoff, and Kitchell holds him up for Langlois to come in and make the finishing tackle. Well, you're going to have to score 24 points to tie this thing up in one quarter. Again, that'd be three touchdowns and three two-point conversions. Just absolute no room for error. And uh, really, I wouldn't think South would be able to give up even a first down here with no, the they, time it eats up on the right. clock. They've got to go three and out every, every time they're on defense. And they've got to score quick on offense. Watch here now as they put Sean McGowan in the game at the fullback slot. A little more of an offensive threat running the ball. So he's at the fullback with Butler deep in the eye. Taking St. Jean out of the football game. Again, they hand it to McGowan. Twice now they put him in in that circumstance yeah, put that they draw. give him the ball. So it's going to be a third, make it fourth and long right now. So it will be time to punt the ball away. He's limping. Wilson's limping pretty good. Rodas to punt it away, averaging uh, in the vicinity of 37 yards punting. Mike Wilson has scored at least two touchdowns in every game he has played this year. Until this one, no Shut touchdowns, out. just a two-point conversion. He's, he's good on. Rodas boots it away, low line drive. Goes out of bounds, good field position for South. What do they call that? Triangulation. <laughs> and then uh, triangulation, the ball will be at the 50-yard line. line. Mike Wilson, final quarter of his football career. It's been a good one here at South Kingstown. But it's about to end on a sour note unless something miraculous can occur. And again, as we've mentioned, South doesn't pass the ball that much. That's not their specialty. They're a running team. Avarista, the quarterback. Split backs. Avarista under heavy pressure. Throws it downfield. Intercepted. Second interception of the day by Neil St. Jean. As we mentioned, that's not South's forte. No, and that's the second time that Nick St. Jean has picked Avarista. He's just kind of hanging back in the flat. And Avarista got a little pressure. Kind of just threw it up there. Kind of threw it into a crowd. Yeah, Ord and uh, appeared to be Logan. Both were down there. And St. Ray's has the ball 
And the 33 yard line, that turnover differential, just a crusher. Two of the turnovers here, setting up points in the second half. Pitch to Neil St. Jean, Nick's twin brother. Have a flag on the play. I got Butler on a clip, I think. And that's where the official seems to be pointing. And it will indeed be a clip. So St. Ray's will march back. Ten minutes to go in the ball game. Sassy and Labasse conferring over there on the sideline. So that's the real Canadian pronunciation, La Basse. La Basse. La Basse. La La Basse. La Basse. So the ball will be spotted down on the 46 yard line, making it now first and about uh, 19 yards to go. The screen backside. Yep, there they go. South reads it this time. Nick St. Jean makes the catch and he is dragged down. You can see South, South was a little more ready for it that time as the defensive lineman who came in untouched backpedaled away because they realized something was going on. Watch Neil St. Jean kind of sneak, sneak. He's got his lineman out front. The ball was just a little bit low. If it would have been a little higher, he could have got off his mark a little bit faster. Drop down there, but he stayed in bounds, and that's what you got to do if you sink Rays right now. Just keep that clock ticking. Second and 16 from the 41. Davis in motion. He has three touchdown catches on the day. Ball goes over the middle, incomplete. Flaherty with the coverage on Neil St. Jean. Good pressure by Langlois. And that stops the clock with nine minutes to go. Several opportunities to pick a star in this one. MVP, Labassier, St. Jean, Davis, all yeah, candidates. All three of those are good candidates. Saint, Break it up three ways. St. Jean's done a nice job on defense. So if you add his brother's stats in with the two interceptions, your twin brother, you definitely win. <laughs> I don't think we can combine. No, we can't do that. No, we can't do that. But he's definitely one of the leading candidates for MVP. We have a timeout by the officials. The conference going on. I've got no idea, but it really doesn't matter. The clock wasn't running anyway, so Salt didn't lose any time off the clock. And you give some credit to the St. Uh, Ray's offensive line, too. I haven't mentioned them much today, but they've done a, a good job of protecting Labossier all day. Uh -huh. Davis handoff up the middle. Another late flag coming in. As you compliment the offensive line, they get a holding call. Exactly. <laughs> Player down on the field appears to be Davis who carried the ball. And again, they played a lot today. They've been out there on the field a lot. Sometimes these are cramps going on yes. on the field, and that's what you hope that they are. Because all right, how about for all the latest ski information? You can check out the Recreation Channel on OSO.com. The Recreation Channel includes conditions, trails, and even live webcam scans. OSO.com. OSO.com brings it home with just one click. And you know, that was interesting you were saying, Gavin. Logan, though, is an, a, a skier, yeah. too, of, yep. of note. He's one of the top 15 in his age group in the country, and he's got a scholarship to go out to Colorado this winter. In fact, he's giving up basketball to, to go out to pursue his skiing, yes. Start at Yagu. Mount Yagu. Mount Yagu. Ah, many of us get our start <laughs> there. As they continue to work on Looks like a Davis. Cramp. Davis, three touchdown receptions in this game so far. And uh, again, again. Yep. should be a cramp the way yep. they're helping him yeah. up. Oh. 
Got a good sized coaching staff over there. They're helping off. Might be a little bit more than a cramp, though, the way uh, he's being helped off the sideline. The nice thing about both these teams, too, Don, is there are a lot of juniors and underclassmen on both teams. They don't lose many seniors. And to uh, Coach Sassy's credit, they lost 18 seniors last year, and he got them back. And so the ball marched way back. Remember, we did have a holding call there before Davis was hurt. So uh, third and about 25 now. They'll just keep it on the ground, hand the ball off, try to eat up some clock, and we got another flag being thrown. And this one might go against South Kingstown. Flaherty got tied up in the middle there. Have to see what the call was. South can't afford any sort of penalties here. It's against St. Ray's, I'm sure it'll be declined and uh, make it a fourth down and kick the ball away. Hold will be against South Kingstown. Getting a little sloppy here. Yeah, we've had a lot. We didn't have many penalties, but here in the fourth, there have been quite a few. It looked like Flaherty got tied up here. Yeah, Flaherty, a little beer hug and a wrestle there and slammed one of the offensive linemen down to the ground. That's holding on the defense after the measurement. And down. Flaherty will pick up the penalty. Not an automatic first down, so it'll be third and ten, and uh, Flaherty out of the game now, talking to Coach Tardiff. Ball on the 33, third and ten. It's important for the South Kingston kids to, to uh, hold their composure at this point, too, Don. Third and ten, the pitch on the outside. There's St. Jean. He'll be dropped short of the first down. The fourth down here, and again a position where you probably see St. Ray's go for it. Yeah, you're on the 30-yard line. You're not going to do anything by punting, so keep the clock moving. Probably run a run the ball on the ground and change possession. Give it back to South Kingstown with probably seven minutes to go on the clock, and be tough to score three touchdowns, or I should say. 24 points in seven minutes. Especially not being a team that passes the ball much right. at all, and uh, they've already been intercepted twice on the day. Fourth and about six. And off St. Jean. First down, and plenty enough to keep possession down to the 20-yard line. Good job by the offensive line, and that was not St. Jean. That was a Jason Leonard, who checked into the game with the carry. Oh, actually, it was so right. It was Leonard who was the lead blocker on the play. Nice job, little Leonard in there. Uh, <laughs> kept those legs pushing and drove the South Kingstown defenders down the field. From the opening kickoff today, Don, it's been a situation where St. Ray's has just taken it to South Kingstown in every phase. Dominance. Total dominance, every phase of the game. Nick St. Jean ready to add to the lead. His third touchdown of the day until the late penalty flag just came in. And uh, that'll cause it to probably to be called back. Nice run by St. Jean, all for not. As the Saints will be marched back. Looked like number 88 was downfield and uh, had a little bit of a Illegal block on the play. Evan Meekins. Yep. You know, he was he was the only blocker down in front of St. Jean. Nice again though. Nice move by St. Jean to cut through the hole. Nice run and oh, yep. it's a clip. Yep. Yep. That was, that was obvious. Good call. Run. Clipping here. It's still a first Very sloppy down. here in the fourth first quarter. And about was, uh, nine. First and about nine. Very well nine. played as far as penalties went in the first three quarters. Yep. From here on out, it's been, it's been ugly. And that'll be the only uh, area on the stat sheet that uh, St. Ray's won't dominate. They've uh, been the more penalized team in this one. So, first and nine. <laughs> Leonard in motion. Hand off to the fullback. And he'll be dropped. Langlois on the tackle. And we've talked about uh, 
the St. Ray's offense all day, too, and we've got to give some credit to the St. Ray's defense. This is a team, South Kingston, that scored 61 points Tuesday night against Cranston West, and Coach Sassy and his defensive staff have come up with a little bit of an adjustment. They put nine guys in the box, and they said, okay, you know what? We're going to make you pound it up in there on us and force you to throw the ball a little bit, and they haven't been able to do it. They averaged 40 points a game during the season. St. Jean... Coming up well short of that 40-point average. And, uh, you know, a lot of those games they called the dogs off early, too, because yeah. they had huge leads throughout the season. Right from the second half here, too, down by 10 points south was. And that probably a key was they went for it on fourth down right around midfield early. They were stopped. St. Ray's, you have to make a team hurt for doing something like that. You have to punish them for coming up short on fourth down. St. Ray's immediately marched. And from there south, and Bruce Charter's team just playing too much catch-up. Yep. They did. That was a big turnaround right there. St. Jean continues to power it forward. He should get a first down on third and short. And we'll keep the ball. And that's, that's not necessarily a second guess. That's a, a decision the coach has to make sure. at that point. It, it could have went either way. If South had gotten the first down at that point and marched, then you know, it's a then great, call. Right, it's a great right. call. So it's, it's not a second guess. It just turned out to be perhaps one of the major turning points in the game. No question. And you're right, if they get that first down there and go down and score and make it 18 to 16, 18, 14 at worst, then they're back in the ball game and it's a great call. It doesn't work and, it, and you get second guessed on that stuff all the time. Pitch outside to Butler, wrapped up by Mike Wilson for no gain. Clock continues to run those, he stayed in bounds, under five minutes to go in the Division II Super Bowl. So last year, St. Ray's came up one point short in the Super Bowl against Mount Hope, but as we mentioned, they'll be taking the hardware back to Pawtucket. Yep. And we have a signal. Appears to be maybe a timeout on the field as Nick St. Jean, make that Neil St. Jean number 21 checks out. Put the blood on the elbow, they gotta get him out and clean him up. Davis back in the game, must have been a cramp that he had. And he is back after getting a little rehydration. Inside the 10, powering his way down to about the six. Third and goal to go from the six. Davis, three touchdown receptions. Jason Boss popping off the field. He got uh, run up on by Davis on that one. Oh, he took a hit in the back of the leg and the thigh or the, the ankle area. And good depth by St. Ray's, too, with the skilled positions. They've been able to run a lot of different guys in and out, and, uh, and they all come in and they've been able to produce. Butler deep in the eye, third and goal to go. Butler with some space. Butler with a touchdown. All but official, St. Ray's to win the Division II Super Bowl. Butler, his first score on the day. They've had two on the ground, four through the air. You take another look. Just run up inside isolation where they try to iso the linebacker. Follow with the tailback. He's done a nice job today also. Butler kind of came out of nowhere. Extra point upcoming. It is good. 39 to 8. Butler and St. Ray's about to win a Super Bowl title. I earn college credits for my military training in aircraft maintenance. With these credits and the education benefits of the Rhode Island Air National Guard, I'm on my way to earning my associate's degree in aircraft maintenance technology. Because I belong to the Rhode Island Air National Guard, I get to attend free state college courses on my base in North Kingstown. I'm pursuing a degree in education. You can receive your college education for little or no cost by being a member of the Rhode Island Air National Guard. Call today. You can barely tell this beautiful cast iron stove is not burning wood. It's the Townsend gas stove from Heat and Glow, and it's available at Stovepipe Fireplace Shop. And because it's gas, you can have a fire with just a touch of a button and enjoy Heat and Glow's clean burning, efficient, realistic flame. Save now on these beautiful stoves starting as low as $849. Don't miss your chance to save hundreds on Heat and Glow's Townsend stoves and other products your heart desires at Stovepipe Fireplace Shop. Back to Pierce Stadium, East Providence. St. Ray's killing the Rebels from South Kingstown. 
39 to eight. No one expected this. As you see, Bruce Tardif, no answers at this point. That's the, as we said before, that's the toughest feeling. And you come in here and you've had a great season, but you know what? You're gonna last one you're gonna remember is this one, and you took it on the chin. And, and think about it, how uh, highly they ranked in New England. Last report, uh, fourth in New England they were, the South Kingstown Rebels, soon to probably drop from that ranking, and Mike Wilson will end his illustrious career at South Kingstown. With a loss, but reason to be proud of an outstanding career and has enough talent to be heard from on another level. Short kickoff, ball loose, and Logan smartly gathers it in just in the nick of time. I'd like to thank everyone here at Pierce Stadium for being nice hosts for us here, and this facility year in and year out serves its state of Rhode Island compatriots very well. Gavin Logan, the freshman, and that's a name you'll be hearing for many years here in the state of Rhode Island, football-wise. Neil St. Jean, the senior, he and his twin brother, Nick, about to end their careers with a Super Bowl. And off Aud, the fullback. Under four to go. You see it's south at this point. No, nothing of a hurry up. They know that they're uh, that they're licked. Just kind of run the clock out. Yeah, it's can't score that many points in three minutes. So total domination here in the second half. You figure south, you know, down ten at the half would be able to muster something, but uh, 21 points. It's Flaherty is drilled by St. Jean as the ball was incomplete. Third down five. Ball hit Jason Leonard almost right in the chest. Could have gone back the other way. Neil St. Jean put one on him. He enjoys the defensive aspect of the game too. Looks like he, it. He's uh, handed out a few good licks. And Mike Wilson's been totally shut down in this game by far the, the least offensive output that he's had in the game this season and probably uh, you have to go back many years yeah. to find that. Yeah, they've totally shut him down and they've really shut down the whole South Kingstown offense. And here comes Mike Wilson. Breaking three just a little bit. We'll get a first down, it appears, for South Kingstown. And again, you were saying that I, I uh, inspired St. Ray's defensive effort. Is that it? Talking to Coach Sassy on the game, on, on the field before the game, uh, he said that you made a comment that it'll be the Mike Wilson show today, and I guess all his defensive guys were watching that yesterday, so. <laughs> Wrong again, huh? You helped him. There we go. Wrong again. It was not the Mike Wilson show. It was the St. Ray's show as exactly. a team, really. I was, was going to try to pick out one individual yeah. player, but you can't. It, as you said, a team effort. Under three to go. Logan inside, handoff, a little bit of room. Nice tackle, though, that time. As number 20, Jason Leonard with a shoestring tackle. Good camera work all day by our guys here at Cox 3. Also, like to thank my compatriots at uh, ABC6 for helping to supply some of the uh, video that we showed you earlier in the game. Just about two minutes to go. Second and seven for South. Ward with the handoff and gets down to about the uh, 46 yard line or so. Terry Lynch will be heading down to the field fairly soon and have some post game interviews for you. Thirty-nine-eight, the score. Third and two, and clock just ticking away. Tough moments on the South Kingstown side. St. Ray's just came up absolutely huge in this one. They lost 27 to nothing to South Kingstown as Odd oh, breaks free into the secondary. Tackled down on about the 35-yard line. First down for South Kingstown with 125 to go. And the coach just got dumped. Sassy just got drilled with the ice water. 
a little cold, but uh, that was a shower that he enjoyed taking. St. Jean, one of the guys dumping the liquid on the coach. Neil St. Jean, and a little bit of hug right there for one of the players, his fullback, Giovanni Rodas. And uh, take a look right here, coming in up. There you see the spray. Back to live action. Logan with a hand off. One minute to go, Division II Super Bowl. Hugs for everybody on the St. Ray's side line. She said 27-0 St. Ray's lost to South Kingstown during the regular season, their only loss of the season. They even de defeated uh, Bishop Hendrickin, who uh, lost in the Division I Super Bowl. And they will avenge that one loss. And last year, they came from a point short in the Super Bowl. But they go home with the hardware. Under 30 to go. Hand off to Kitchell up the middle. Tackled down on about the 30-yard line. And that's going to be the end of this one, I think, as South Kingstown star Mike Wilson already out of the game, sitting by himself over on the South Kingstown sideline. Ten seconds to go. This one is all over. The Saints from St. Ray's come marching into Pierce Stadium in the Division II Super Bowl, and they head home to Pawtucket with a championship, 39-8, to the final, the stunning upset of the previously undefeated Rebels of South Kingstown. St. Ray's, your Division II state champions in 1999. And there is Mike Wilson, star at South Kingstown, who ended up coming up just short on this season. Outstanding year, came into this one with 36 touchdowns, but none today. He got in the end zone once on a two-point conversion, and that was it. And Coach Sassy has the game ball and hugs for everybody. St. Ray's, your state champions in Division Two in 1999. And Terry Lynch is down on the field pretty soon. He'll be talking to both coaches and a star player. For St. Ray's, and again, it's not easy to pick out any one individual star player for St. Ray's. Number 21, Neil St. Jean, has to be one of those stars. But there was a team effort, no doubt about it, for St. Ray's as they come away with a 39-8 victory in the Division II Super Bowl. We'll be back to Pierce Stadium for the post-game ceremonies. Stay tuned. We'll be back on Cox 3. When you're on the go, each and every day, you need a place to shop that has everything. All this week at Apex, it's the Fashion Blowout Sale. Save up to 50% on women's, men's, and kids. Everything you need is right here at the Apex Fashion Blowout Sale. For online shopping, remember apexstores.com. Apex, everything for you and your family under one roof. There's something for everyone at Apex. The Rhode Island Interscholastic League, a voluntary private nonprofit organization, provides educational opportunities for Rhode Island students through interscholastic athletics. The legislative body of the league meets on a monthly basis to provide guidance and support for the over 20,000 student athletes participating in 24 sports. The league is built upon the foundations of character, sportsmanship, and citizenship. Call 272-9844. You might have heard that when it comes to finding a good job in Rhode Island, it's not what you know, but who you know. Well, thanks to OSO.com, that's about to change. Introducing Jobs on OSO.com. Simply the best place to find a job in the Ocean State. Search hundreds of quality listings by career, company, even salary range. What are you waiting for? Come to OSO.com and click on Jobs. Remember, it's not about who you know, it's about the job you deserve on OSO. OSO.com. Find what you're looking for in Rhode Island. are so busy these days that they may only have one chance to see the news of the day. We offer stories that are very important to Rhode Island. You'll get features you won't get anywhere else. You paid for it, consumer alert, and live Doppler radar. The Rhode Island News Channel, where you can get ABC6 News 24 hours a day. But you've got the time. We've got the news. The Rhode Island News Channel, a service of Cox Communications and ABC6 News. It's road-hugging, fuel-injected, wind-blowing through your hair excitement. It's in the turn of the wheel. It's acceleration, performance. It's the edge.
the advantage of owning an all-new Volkswagen. At the new Speedcraft Volkswagen, we have the edge. Selling outstanding new and used vehicles with personal care and attention to your needs, making your car buying experience pure pleasure. Drivers wanted customer satisfaction guaranteed at the new Speedcraft Volkswagen Wakefield. Under new ownership, let us show you what the new and the new Speedcraft is all about. Back to Pierce Stadium, 39 to 8. The final, we head down to field. Terry Lynch with a very happy head coach of St. Ray's. Don, thank you very much. I'm here with Mike Sassy. Mike, tremendous job of coaching. I thought you guys played them from the get-go, from the opening kickoff. You guys did a great job. We were trying to pick out one guy that, that, that did a great job for you. We couldn't. It was a team effort. Talk about that a little bit. I told my kids, it doesn't matter how big you are. I know they're a lot bigger than us. But you know, it doesn't matter in size, it matters in heart and determination, and our, my kids have the biggest hearts in the state. They did a great job today from Labassia running the offense, to St. Jean, to Butler, to Davis. The whole crew did a, a fantastic job. Right. Talk a little bit about your defense. They really shut down South uh, Kingstown. You know, that was a big story. I mean, defensively, everybody was saying, uh, you know, Wilson this, Wilson that. Even our own local paper, the Evening Times, is all, you know, Mike Wilson. And I knew my kids were going to step it up today. We did a little different scheme defense. We usually run a 40. Today we ran a 50. And uh, I think that confused them a little bit. We dared them to run the fullback. We figured he's a good fullback, but he's not going to beat you because he can't make the big play. I know he, you know, we'll give him four or five. We bend but didn't break, so to speak. Was I? Well, we, we, give, we gave a little credit to our, our guy upstairs, Don Coyne, also. Yeah. I want to thank him personally for that, too. I want to thank you. Thank you for that. He, and, uh, hey, we, it was a great job by you guys today. Go enjoy it with your team. Good luck. Great job, Michael. Take care. Don, we're going to get uh, Neil Labassiere over here in a minute. And back up to you. We see him heading right back over in your direction, Terry, so we'll stay right with you. As uh, matter of fact, Terry, why don't you send it right back to you and get to one of the stars of the game. Neil, congratulations. Great job. You guys did a super job. Talk us a little bit about what you guys did on offense, and then we'll talk about the defense. Well, we changed up to the I formation because we thought we could hit the holes a little bit quicker, and we knew we had some speed on them, especially inside. So, And we proved today that one team's better than one person. Exactly. I, we were talking in, in, in the get-go that it was a whole team effort from oh. the time that you guys returned the opening kickoff. We were trying to pick out who was the, the guy on offense, and it was Labassi, it was you, it was Davis. Butler, it was Davis. You guys all did a great job today. And you're right, one team overcame one person. Yep. Talk about what you guys did on defense oh, against well. South Kingstown. We, we showed that Mike Wilson is stoppable because we did it tonight. He's a good player. You he guys is. did a great job all around. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Don, back up to you. Thank you very much, Terry. And Heath Labossier, your most valuable player. He was 11 of 13 for 156 yards passing and four touchdown passes. And the senior, Labossier, is your most valuable player. You see him right there as St. Ray's comes away with the Division II state championship. And quickly, Neil St. Jean heads over and gives his quarterback a hug. As we said, many stars on this day for St. Ray's, and uh, there's another guy who looks like Neil St. Jean, Nick St. Jean, twin brother also getting in on the action over there as St. Ray's avenges their only loss of the season. That was to South Kingstown earlier this year, 27-0. Mike Wilson scored four touchdowns in that first meeting today. He scored no touchdowns. First time all season he's been kept out of the end zone. In fact, every game he had played into in this point uh, to the season, he had scored at least two touchdowns, but only had a two-point conversion today as South was totally dominated, 39-8. to The final here in the Division II Super Bowl as St. Ray's gets all the glory to the victors go the spoils, and that's what they get down there on the field here at Pierce Stadium. They are your Division II state champions in the state of Rhode Island. So we'll be back for a little more here and we'll have more of the celebration from St. Ray's in just a moment. The holiday season has begun, and it's time to choose that special gift for that hard-to-buy-for person. Quaker Lane Tool has hundreds of gift ideas to choose from, and this year we're making it even easier. Just have your special someone fill out a Quaker Lane Tool gift registration card. With such a wide selection of brand names, let them pick their favorite tools so you don't have to. Merry Christmas from Quaker Lane Tool. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. I earned college credits for my military training in aircraft maintenance. With these credits and the education benefits of the Rhode Island Air National Guard, I'm on my way to earn my associate's degree in aircraft maintenance technology. 
Because I belong to the Rhode Island Air National Guard, I get to attend free state college courses at my base in North Kingstown. I'm pursuing a degree in education. You can receive your college education for little or no cost by being a member of the Rhode Island Air National Guard. Call today. Back to Pierce Stadium, back down to the field. Terry Lynch with uh, South Kingston coach Bruce Tartar. Don, thank you very much. We're here with Bruce Tartar. Bruce, congratulations on a tremendous year. Unfortunately, you're going to remember this one for the whole year. Talk to us a little bit about what the team meant to you this year. Well, you know, the, the team, it's, it's something we'll never forget. We, we accomplished uh, a tremendous amount of things this year. Uh, and, you know, uh, you know, I guess when, when sometime you're going to play like that. And, uh, uh, you know, St. Ray's came out, they just jumped all over us. We, we, had, we had a chance to turn the momentum uh, in the first half, and we scored the touchdown at two, uh, two points away through in four. Uh, it really, uh, the, the, I think the real key to the game was uh, when they scored with about 15 seconds left in the half, and, and then on, on the first series we had blown coverage in the second half where they, they run a screen in. So that was a little bit, uh, a little bit much to overcome, but uh, still it was a great year for us. It, it was a great year. It's, it's too bad that it ends like this. You go through the whole year, and the kids great, played great for you. I got a chance to see them living down in South Kingstown. I got a chance to see you guys a few times during the year, and this wasn't the South Kingstown team that we had seen all year. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't, and, and St. Ray's had a lot to do with it. You know, they, they, I really congratulate and deserve a lot of credit. They beat us in every facet of the game. Uh, you know, uh, uh, running, passing, and coaching. So, so you know, when you put those three together, uh, you deserve to win. And, and they did it. And they did it decisively, and uh, my hats off to them. Well, you guys did a great job this year, Bruce. Thank you. I, I know it's tough to come over here, but thank you very much. Good luck. We'll see you. Don, back up to you. Thank you very much, Terry. Your final score: 39 to 8. Division II Super Bowl goes to St. Ray's. As they are the victors. We'd like to thank everyone who helped us with this broadcast here at Pierce Stadium. Director Mike Narachi, Slammer, gave us the stats today. And, of course, Terry Terry Lynch, my color analyst. And, Terry, uh, we saw a great game yesterday, and this one just an absolute stunner. Yeah. It, 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 Don, it's, it's totally opposite of what we thought we were going to see with, with St. Ray's coming out here and totally dominating, as we said, from the opening kickoff to the last whistle. And they did it as a team. As... Uh, as Neil said, one team can overcome one player, so, and that's what happened today. Thank you very much, Terry Lynch. Hope you get that URI job. We'll see you there. How's that? Thanks. All right. St. Ray's, the victors, tonight on Cox 3. Make sure you join us. Rhode Island Special Olympics auction coming on. Mary Lou Palumbo, Mike Montecalvo will have that on Cox 3. That'll be special. Make sure you stay tuned to that. And a special day for Mike Sassy and the St. Ray's Saints. Goodbye, everybody.